for DPs who've been in the game for years know that one of the most valuable traits is leadership. And today, here to speak on this topic is cinematographer Raymond Takiro. Raymond has been in the industry since 2005 and moved to Toronto in 2019. And with his years of wisdom, he continues to find ways to teach his craft and give back to the community. From topics about passion, gear, lighting, and the overall process of cinematography, this is a big episode we do not want to miss. So, welcome to the Apple Box Podcast. I'm your host, Danny Lau, and I'm sitting alongside my co-host, Anthony Voltzinas, and across with us today, the man of the hour, Raymond Takira. Let's get it. I do a lot of Zoom calls, so I'm oh, used. I'm used to microphones. Oh, remember you, during Sweet. the pandemic, you were like you were like cinematography Zoom guy. Oh yeah, I, had, <laughs> I, went, I went nuts. Lighting. I went nuts. That yeah. was before I sold my 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 um FS5. FS5 Mark II. And yeah. then I was like, well, I have nothing else I can plug. I don't want. I don't want to plug my FX9. I think it's huge. I use <laughs> this pocket as my webcam now. That's an awesome yeah. idea. I still have Honestly. my FS5. And, and I bought a Pelican for it, like a, like the Jason case. Nice. And I, I bought it just so I can store it and not use it. So now I'm going to bring it out of retirement for my webcam. You should idea. do it. It's a good you idea. should do it. Yeah, I have the 18 to 35. I bought for it. I didn't use it maybe once. I'm like, this, uh, this is fine. This is fine. I, I wanted, so I have an old FS100. Do you remember that camera? Oh, yeah, yeah. Is yeah. that like, it's a weird it's like shape. Very camera long. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was, um, it was Sony's first like mirrorless replacement camera. They were, okay. they were battling the 5D Mark Mark II, yeah, yes, or three when they, when the Mark III became a video camera, yeah. right? Mm. Um, and so I got I was like, well, I don't like DSLRs. I wanted to jump into like a, and so I had a Canon XL2, yep. mm. interchangeable, and then Sony came with their thing. I was like, I'll give that a try. I actually liked it. It made me money. I'm not gonna be mad at it. Yeah, yeah. It paid yeah. itself off. But uh, someone messed up. Um, I was doing a uh, sports thing for one of the. I know, are you guys recording? I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Is it recording? Yeah, okay, let's well, let's, 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 let's uh, keep going. We'll start, going. we'll start. We'll do the <laughs> we'll intro. Over. Okay, we'll do the intro. Okay. I have a lot <laughs> of stories. I think stuff. Anthony and I, last time we, we chatted, I had a ton of stories. Yeah. Okay. I'm a, I'm a stories guy. I love stories. Yeah, so yeah, you'd yeah. rather be known so. as Raymond or Ray? I go by either, honestly. Okay. Um, whatever rolls off the tongue happy. That, you, that's Ray how, shoots. Ray shoots on YouTube. That's it. I know. I do Ray shoots on YouTube. That's right. I don't even YouTube as much anymore, though. I remember that. You're you getting deep into it for a bit. I know, but it's it's a lot of work. you get busy, it's tough. Yeah, YouTube. It's a lot of work. It's a different world. It is. It is. It's a full-time I'm, job. You know, impressed by you guys doing this podcasting. This is very cool. Well, I think we have both of us. We also have a social media manager, so like it's really yeah. spread out. We need help for sure. It's not. It's not. It's not a one person. <laughs> but also, like, YouTube, person but job. also like YouTube style videos. It's yeah. a lot more work than like just sitting down and shooting. Oh man, you know what? It's so true. It's so true. It's, I I uh, uh, I did some marketing things for some from different companies like marketing projects, and I've met a lot of their social media managers. Yeah. And they talk about how hard it is for them to do it, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I just like no, I can't. Yeah. I love the content creation. I can't yeah. do this. Daily in day out, it's a lot, you know. And I and I hear about is it um, Potato Jet, you know? The yeah, guy yeah, Potato Jet, I love him. Yeah, yeah, everyone talks about him, right? And he even talks. He had, a, I think, one of his his uh, episodes was talking about how hard it was to do this. Mm. Like he's like editing one day, shooting the next, editing the one day, shooting the next, get a product, review it. What's a new one, idea? And then like and doing it. that new idea, and, and it's just it. like yeah, yeah. I feel like long term that is a tough game. Mm -hmm. So because but if you're good at it, YouTube. Yeah, you rewards consistency, too. right? That's it. And That's so, it. like, if you 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 could be doing it consistent for like six months, you stop. All of a sudden, like your channel's going boom. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. true. We'll pick it up. Honestly, I feel like in this industry, if you're consistent with any level that you're going to jump on, what you know, whatever lane you want to you want to be in, yeah, um, you have to be consistent in that to be noticed. Yeah, that's you true. Know? That's, that's true. facts. So like yep. if you want to be a person who does like all weddings all the time, we do podcasts all the time, be the person who does all the reviews all the time, someone who does like narrative work, and then that breaks out in a whole different another lane. Yeah. You want to do corporate work, you have to be in that lane to be niched out, be like, hey, that's the person you want. You want that guy or that girl. Right? Yeah. This is who I you am. You want that person. Right. Do you do have it. a niche? Do I have a niche? Um, It changes every four years. Oh, okay. And to tell you the truth. Yeah, okay. every four years. Um, yeah. Are, they, are we starting? Is that how the game? Yeah, okay. let's just go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, honestly, yeah, we're it's just already, gonna flow into it's it. It's already flowing. It's fine. With it. It's already oh, flowing. Man. Let's just go with it. Man, um, I feel like I should be asking questions. I'm telling you guys stories. <laughs> no, uh, this, this is what we. This is the best. This is the best conversation. Oh, uh, you know that's that's true. So I've been in the game since '05. It's been a while. Damn. Yeah, and yeah. I've moved around. So like, I came here from the states. Right? Okay. Yeah. Um, and I started in in Cali, mm -hmm. and then ended up in Texas. Was there for quite a while. 
and then ended up uh, here because my wife is from Toronto. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. so I can work now from U.S. And I was telling them earlier. That is so I was like, I can, I can jump into it. Yeah, I've That's had a few a good, people come to me like, Raymond, uh, we hate you. I'm jealous. I'm <laughs> jealous of that. I get the I get the, the raised eyebrow, I hate you, Ray. <laughs> they love me, but there's like, I was like, I hate you, Ray. You know? It's like, yeah. Yeah, because um, yeah, I got back from New York. I was telling you, like, I was gone for like a week for a marketing shoot, and mm. it was kind of cool. But yeah, so since every year, it, it, every time I got into the industry, it's been a different game. Uh, when I first got into it, the only thing in my head that I ever thought about was like broadcast. So I fell into broadcast world. I did oh, cool. sports broadcast. I actually was one of the cam ops for Fox Sports. No way. And so I, I did, did sports I did, broadcast. I did sports too. broadcast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I did the I did ran around doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. Freelancer. Yeah. Um I did some of the All Star games, basketball All Star games. Nice. Huge cool. basketball fan. So I was like, Yeah, Me too. why not? Yeah. Why not? Um, you know, I haven't been watching lately, so sorry, Raptors. But you know <laughs> <laughs> It's okay, they didn't you know, make it. But. That's that, that's <laughs> yeah. true. That's true. Um I know I saw that game. Um we were in New York watching that. One, uh, Chicago. Yeah. Heartbreaker. Anyways, we're not gonna talk about. Yeah, sports. we're not gonna talk about. We're not gonna talk about sports. Fired, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> edit that part out. Well, no sports. Too, That's so. a different uh, industry. <laughs> <laughs> it's still media. Anyways, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, I did that for for like two three years. Yeah. Um, and then I fell into doing corporate commercial things. You know, those kind of mm. standard talking heads. Yep. You know, board wired whatever PowerPoint presentation. You name it. Yeah. Um, I actually, I had a, de- my original degree was not in media. I was actually going to be an engineer. Oh, wow. And so friends from engineering, um, they end up graduating and moving on with life in that same field. And I ran into a buddy who was, uh, getting into engineering in Texas and I was like, oh, cool. And so I ran into him, talked to him for a bit. And then I talked, I, I met a gentleman who was actually doing videos for like the major oil and gas companies. And he was like, Hey, do you want to do this stuff with me? And I was like, Sure. And then we just started flying out and doing like documentary style mm. shoots. And then, so then I was a documentary person for however long that is, you know, I think yeah. it was like six years. Wow. So, and then I had just ended up doing a lot of corporate <clears throat> stuff and running into those guys. So like ExxonMobil, Chevron, Shell, I can say it now because I don't do anything yeah. for them now. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> you know, guys. yeah, yeah, no, don't, don't do anything for them. But yeah, so I did a lot of things <laughs> for those guys. That was yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah, you, were saying, you were telling me when we first met, I was PAing on like a, a short film for Joel. Yeah. That. Oh and my God. I think it was the first time I met you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, you were telling me how you were shooting like on oil rigs and things like that. Yeah. It was pretty intense. I must imagine. Yeah. You know. It was fun. Honestly, yeah. uh, it would be myself and like four people. Okay. Um, and so I'd have myself, uh, I'd be running camera. We'd have a producer. We have an audio person. Um, and then we have a PA. It's really about it. Simple, yeah. yeah. Uh, simple, simple crew. Um, the cool thing about oil and gas companies, they, they want everyone to feel comfortable when you sleep. So they, we all got our own little beds. Oh, oh nice. So it's kind of neat. Yeah, yeah. We, weren't in the, we weren't like hugging each other on an oil rig. <laughs> <one back before. laughs> That's pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, we were on oil rigs. Uh, we were on oil platforms. <clears throat> we did a lot of like uh, shipyard things. And before wow. drones was a thing, we actually had to buy our own helicopter seat to shoot out of. Wow. So we, we had to get like harness protection. So the old school, like yeah, actual yeah, helicopter yeah. Shots. sat outside of it. Wow. And I was like, yeah, we had to ask our team members, like, who's afraid of heights? I was say, that's kind of wow. scary. Who, who could be over? I was like, oh, I was game. Nice. <laughs> I was game. You know, yeah, you I, to. I, I'm a little bit of a, of a, of a adrenaline junkie back yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. My, my wife's not happy about that now, but you know, that's why I don't do it anymore. Yeah. But like, <laughs> but I used to love it. I used yeah. to be able to like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll dangle my butt out there. That's fun, <laughs> man. Give me that four point harness. Let's go. Was it ever <laughs> stormy or like rainy or like? Crazy. Um, well, the cool thing is, is the, the helicopter products are very safe, yeah. you know, mm. um, so they would always check the weather. They would always check like the radar mm. and do their checks. And I loved it because yeah. my, my engineering background that I was going for was, was aerospace. I wanted to oh, be a pilot. Wow. Oh, sick. So I was like loving it. I yeah, was like, this yeah, is so cool. Both worlds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was yeah. able to like learn about it. I was like, hey, man, I know about this. Oh, that's new. Let me check oh, that so out. So, yeah, cool. so I got in. I, I, I got it pretty cool with some of the pilots. So I was like, this is fun. And they're like, wait, you know about this stuff? It's like, yeah, I'm, I don't always do video. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, a, it's like, a, like, one of like, a, like a movie The Rock would be in, like you're hanging out of the helicopter. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the camera? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like stormy out. That's what I, that's what I imagine. True, yeah. true. Yeah, but so. no, it was a lot of fun. I, I do miss that because that was a really good time, honestly. Mm. We got to do a lot of cool places, check out some really cool locations, um, travel the world kind of thing, yeah. you know. So then, you, then you came to Canada? Yeah. I mean, was it, did you meet your <clears throat> wife first and then come here? Yes. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, we, we met each other playing volleyball. 
uh, oh, so, cool. social hangout, volleyball, drinks, that nice. kind of thing, you know? Nice. So it wasn't just like a bar, what's up, girl, yeah. kind of thing. It was, a, <laughs> it, was like, it, was, it was active. Yeah, it was active. It was active. We were yeah. active, you know, uh, we were both in the running, so we were actually very, I was a lot more fit than I am now, you know, I'm like, I've gained some weight. pretty good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I have a kid, so maybe she keeps me alive. Yes. But <laughs> not, not sleeping, probably. Not sleeping, probably, and, and all the gigs. But no, uh, yeah, we did that. We met each other. Um, she was traveling. I was traveling, doing work stuff, uh, which mm. worked out for considering our considered industry is never... You know, nine to five. Yeah. And uh, no, yeah. Then move. She brought me up here. We actually had a choice. I was like, "Hey, do you want to stay in the states? Do you want to go up to Canada?" And she, her job, like they gave her, you know, a choice. And she was mm-hmm. like, "Well, I don't want to have to go through all the green card stuff." And and my family is here, so she's one hundred percent from Toronto. Mm-hmm. And so she's like, "I want to go back home." I was like, "No worries. You know, I'm freelancer, whatever." Yeah. yeah. I live life bouncing around. Yeah. Um, I grew up as a military brat, so living all over the world, wow. normal. Yeah, Normal, wow. You know? Yeah. Like, my, none, none of my... We were all talking about... Well, someone else was asking me about this. Myself and my sibling, there's five of us. None of us were born in the same, I think, country. No way. Yeah. Wow. We thought really about crazy. that. That's I was like, crazy. holy crap, none of us are born in the same country. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'm born in Belgium. Belgium? Talk about a Belgium. weird, crazy stretch. Like, where wow. the heck was Raymond born at? Belgium. No one's ever going to so figure that out. around a lot, I guess. Yeah, we're Filipinos. I'm born in Belgium. My my sis, One of my sisters born in Germany. One's in Georgia. She's the only one in, tech, in the U.S. Wow. Uh, my brother's in Washington and my... Uh, Oh, actually, yeah, my brother is Washington, but uh, I thought it was Guam, but he tells me, no, it's Washington. I was like, sure, but all right, whatever. And then my <laughs> oldest sister is Philippines. So, yeah, wow. crazy, That's right? That's crazy. Yeah, that military family huge. jumped all over the place. My, our mom was a, she was a, a, a moving nurse and everything, yeah. a move around nurse, like a traveling nurse mm-hmm. in Europe. She mm-hmm. loved Europe, so grew up most of our childhood in Europe. Wow. And then they dragged us to the, dragged us to the States. I'm, I'm using the correct words. Dragged was the right word. Really? We, we, we really wanted to stay as yeah. kids, you know? yeah. It's different, you know, a lot of people talk about traveling and like as adults we love traveling. Yeah. But as kids you're like, Oh, my friends are going. Yeah, I know, you yeah. don't want to go. Yeah. <laughs> what the heck is going on? Yeah. You're just forming your relationships. Like you're just oh. like, Well, I can talk to people now finally. Yeah. 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 That's wow. honestly where I got my ability to just like be open and be like, screw it, I'm just gonna have friends. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. Worldwide friends. Very outgoing. Yeah. And yeah. I just like talk to everybody. That's just my game. So yeah. that's why I network really well, I guess. Yeah. yeah. That's you like know? one of your strong suits. Is like someone told me that yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> I went to a network event and I'm like, Ray, we know who you are. I was like, you know, once some wow. heard my name, I was like, Oh man, blessings. Thank you. Yeah. You know, for for knowing my name and everything. Would <laughs> you say that's a big part of your career and what built your career to where you are? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. And I still do it today, you know. Yeah. Um it's you know it's a level of game in the industry right and yeah. you have to depending on where you're going it's always like you got to network with different levels and as you go up you meet new people and you you keep going up but I love networking with people who have just started out yeah. and people who are above me um, because people who are just starting out you never know where they're gonna land exactly yeah they, sure. they some there's a lot of lot of young um, filmmakers I'm meeting in the industry they like in three four years are like the producer. Yeah, you exactly. know they're the director, they're yeah. the, they're the head person. You're like, hey, that's the person to be hiring you next. Don't ever be mean to them. They're all yeah. cool people, just like you are. Totally right? They had their humble beginnings. Mm-hmm. You you had yours. You just got to respect where their where their journey's at. Yeah. Um. And sometimes they're just their education level if they go through school puts them in a different position than you know where you're at now. Yeah, that's uh, true too. And there's more opportunities for everybody. I think now I was like, man, I really wish I had this opportunity when I was a kid. Shit, you know, yeah. well, kid in the industry, I should put it that way. A kid you almost in, fast in track a little bit because like it's everything's so accessible in terms of knowledge and like. Oh my technical skills and yeah. things like that. Mm-hmm. You have to spend 20 years doing it. You can, People can do it in two, three, four, you know? 100%. This industry is a lot easier to get into, <laughs> too. I mean, the standard is kind of just, if you go on YouTube, you can kind of learn. And then if you learn just a little bit and you save up a little bit of money, you can get yeah. a camera. And then from there, you can start creating. So I guess, you know, from when you started versus from, you know, a kid starting today, it, it, you know, like it, it's a different industry. But like you said, like you never know who can become what. Like, you know, I'm self-taught. Anthony's self-taught. You know, yeah. like none of us. I didn't go to school. Did you go to school? Film school at all? I did not. Yeah, I did so not. So you're doing you engineering, I guess. So. I did, <laughs> yeah, engineering school. But, uh, you know, I, I did do like a one-year broadcast school just to understand it. Yeah. yeah. So I guess I did do schooling. Yeah. But the funny thing was... Not I, film I, school. No, not a film school. Yeah. No, I went yeah. to a broadcast school. Yeah. And um, I did it in a year and got a bachelor's. Oh, <laughs> wow. Yo, that's pretty... <laughs> if any, so any filmmaker who was like, my parents want me to have a degree... I cheated the system, which they they, uh, they fixed it where you can't do it the way I did it. I, okay. I remember going to the school. <laughs> they fixed it. Uh, I'm gonna be nice and not, not call the school out. But yeah, like yeah, I okay. went to the school and uh it's in Texas. And then so I went to the school. I don't think they're around anymore. Anyways, I went to school and um I looked at the the the, the they told me normal stuff, you need to have your English, your maths, your science, yeah. you know, those kind of things. And I said, Well, here's my science my my degree where I'm at, and gave him my my transcript. She was like, Oh, 
<laughs> they were like, a little well, impressed. Okay, scratch that side off. Nice. Yeah. Well, now you have to do two and a half years of like one on one video, one on one this photography, lighting, prep, all mm. that kind of stuff. I was like, hold on, I want to go to work. And so I can I can I have ten minutes? And she goes, what? And so I looked at it. I rearranged no her, her her thing. I looked at this. If I take a night class at this time, if I take this class in summer, this class in winter, I'll have my degree by the, by this time next year. Wow. That's how I broke it down. She just kind of looked you at it her job and much. she thought about it and she goes, dang. <laughs> <laughs> I have to do it. Yeah. That's wow. pretty cool. So she was like, okay, well, all right. Well, then here you go. Let's see if you can. She, she, she kind of challenged me, like, yeah. challenge accepted. Let's see if you can do it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I went day in, day out. I still had, I even had time to go drinking with some of these people, but I still did. No, I'm going to have a couple of drinks and I'm going to go back to wow. do my wow. thing. So I had a little bit of a mindset. Like, I wanted to go to work. Yeah. Yeah. That was my, that was my passion. I was like, I want to go to work. I don't want to sit in here going to school. I want to, yeah. you know, get in. Get I want to get in, get out. Yeah. yeah. I keep moving. So, so you had, you talked about the four, like the four year windows. What are you, where are you now? In terms of the four years, yeah. So honestly, I think now I'm, I'm gonna be stuck in this. I'm loving the narrative area. Yeah. Oh my oh, amazing. gosh. Cool. The Toronto's opened that opened up that window a lot for me. Mm. Actually, it's when, when you and I met. I was like, man, this is okay. That All was right. early days too. Like that was a while I back. I think you were just getting into more of the narrative stuff in Toronto because you were yeah. only a year in the city. I, I was think? a year in the city when which, you and I met, which is crazy. Maybe less than that. Yeah, I think it was less. less. Than like that, you yeah. were fresh. I was fresh to the city. Yeah. Yes. Oh man, it was interesting. <laughs> I was like, how do these people work in Canada? Like, who are these people? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that was a crazy shoot, too. That was weird. It was. And st- I still owned all that gear. That was all my gear. I know. I brought, yeah, FS5, Mark II, yeah. all the lights. Yeah, all the lights. I had a lot of lights. I love lights. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah? I'll, do I'll you still own a lot of gear right now? I do. Yeah. I do still own a lot of gear. Yeah. I still do a lot of projects that are, um, you know, small, and they, they don't have the budget for things. Like, look, I'll help you guys out. No worries. You're going to yeah, throw yeah. me a little bit of cash. I'm, I can bring my gear. Because, yeah, one, yeah. it's also, regardless of how much I get paid, I... You bring the gear knowing that you have the tools that can get you be successful, yeah. whatever you do. Because if you make a project and you're like, you know, I'm going to let them stumble on this one. But like, well, my name's also on that. So right. I can't let that stumble that's too true. hard. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's my work going out there. People are going to see like, man, you're doing so great. And then what happened here? Yeah. Like, what's, what's this line doing? You know, you got to keep a yeah. standard well, for yourself despite 100%. some of the work you take on. It's just like, and you're also like strategic with the work and the jobs and the people mm-hmm. like, yeah, I might meet mm-hmm. this person here, this agency person here whatever you know exactly exactly and when i do get you know to pay the bills i do get some like the commercial shoots and like yeah. corporate mm-hmm. stuff but i try to push that envelope i love pushing the corporate envelope as yeah. i call it yeah, yeah. i look at them as like look <laughs> this is what you guys want to do <clears throat> yeah but there's a reason why you brought me here yeah yeah because you guys saw my work as not as i don't do that i do oh, this I and i and i push it right yeah, like, yeah. you got to push it so yeah you have to yeah put your stamp and, on it too right yeah. and I, I, you know you're talking about youtubers and like yeah. everybody's learning really fast on youtube university as they yeah, call it pretty right? much, yeah and I love the fact that the YouTubers are pushing the more cinematic look. Yeah. You know, yeah. I was listening to um, some of the cinematographers who are the top the line IATSE cinematographers. And they, one of the guys talks about that. He said, when you wanted to be a top end line person in narrative, you had to be doing films. Mm-hmm. But now you can be doing TV shows and it looks awesome. Yeah. You true. know, he says, we've made TV shows become a new world. It used to be TV shows were like one level, like Seinfeld, mm-hmm. and then you'd watch like Star Wars, right? Yeah. And, and now you watch, you know, Lock and Key. Yeah. Yeah. And it looks as good as if you were watching it's one almost of the like master. It's the like, same oh. level as Hollywood yeah. these days. Yeah. Oh my God. The gosh, budgets are just as much. That's true. Yeah. That's true. And they're recognizing more people love to binge watch now. Yeah. yeah. You know, thanks to the world of Netflix. Yeah, right? pretty much. They've, yeah. they've opened up the whole binge watch world. Yeah. Which I was surprised HBO didn't do that because HBO had their, their nighttime thing and they yeah. had a bunch of stuff going through back in the day. Um, but yeah, no, streaming has like, changed the game. It's Absolutely. Crazy. Has it affected uh, the type of work that you get for yourself or? Um, yeah. You know, honestly, a lot of, uh, I, I've, been doing a lot of web series mm-hmm. recently, which is pretty cool. I finished a three season web series last um, fall. I actually picked up a web series this past March. I finished up. Cool. We finished uh, Cam uh, wrap up was like two and a half, three weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. Three weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> I remember, yeah. What, I remember what it was. <laughs> it's like you yeah. went to war. And I know. Back. I know. I was like, I went in war and I came out like crawling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's pretty much. Yeah. I love it. You know, um, I remember you guys were talking to someone else about like how, how much hard work it is to do. Uh, I think I heard. I was listening to one of you guys. Podcast. I love listening to guys' podcast. By the way, good Thank job. You. Oh, <laughs> good job. No, Appreciate I love. It. I love it. Plus, it's all the people that I know. I'm like, oh, cool. I'll listen. You know, <laughs> yeah, true, respect, yeah. respect. Yeah. But um, you know, like, there's a lot of people who talk about it's hard to be in this industry. I was like, you have to kind of know what you're going to step into. Yeah. Right. If you if you respect the the amount of hard work that goes into whatever level it is, then you'll be fine running through it. But if That's you true. get into it and you start complaining day one, 
you know, might want to think about something else. Yeah. No, nothing against it. Yeah. It's yeah. not for everybody. Yeah. You the know, shell just, shock is, is yeah. apparent. You got to yeah. have energy, as, as I kind of do. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> you have to have the passion and charisma to like. 100%. You know, because yeah. that's yeah. what gets you hired, ultimately. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like, what's your passion? Are you are you somebody that, if I'm going to be on a feature with you for even 90 days, do I want to hang out with you for 90 days? You know, and that's. <laughs> It doesn't matter how talented you are. You got to like the people you're around, you oh, know, man. otherwise. Even people I love, I don't want to hang around with. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I got to really like you, you know? Yeah, you got to really like each other. Yeah, That's tough, so know? true. That's a, You know, pilots in TV shows is almost like a first date. It's like, you know what? We did this pilot together. <laughs> yeah. I think we can work together now. You know, that might be something. Yeah. You pull them closer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You get so it going, yeah. yeah. So like, it, well, let's talk a little bit about cinematography. Yeah, just go generally ahead. Generally, just game. talk about cinematography. Oh, I love it. Do you have um, something that you are known for or like a style that would, would how would you describe your own style? Oh, that's a tough one. Wow. Um, I know. Uh, okay, so interesting enough, um, lately in the past like couple of years, I, I, I guess I'm getting into a new level, which I love. Yeah. Like, finding new levels. Like, oh, cool. It's like, it's like video game playing. Yeah. Um, where I'm starting to get interviewed for projects along with a lot of other DPs, but I, I get interviewed five or six months prior to the project going to camera mm. or even going to pre-prep. And it's, it's interesting to kind of see that game. And I had an interview recently and, uh, and I guess I was on the second level of interviews. They came back and called me again. And the director said, look, we love your work. We think it's really good, but you don't particularly fit our project. And I was like, no, respect. You know, mm -hmm. and every cinematographer you meet, every camera operator you meet has a different way that they yeah. do their thing. And so I just <clears> asked her, I was like, um, do I really have a style? Because I honestly don't even know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I mean, I think, I, I guess I have a way that I love the light now. Yeah, yeah. And I that must be my style. And uh, she said, no, you really do have, it's like, everyone's calling you, you have a style, Ray. And it's like, oh yeah, we like Ray. Ray's a cool guy. Mm -hmm. But he's got a style that we're like, eh, I don't know. You know like his style does this, but we want to we go this way. I was like, interesting. interesting. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So I was like, huh. I did not know that. It's weird hearing so, that from some uh, someone else when you're not even like thinking about it like that. No, you know? I don't. I I want to be more flexible. Um, I'm starting to get into some projects. Actually, there's some new ones that are coming up this this couple couple of months from now. And there's some people that I met that have some really crazy off. I was like, I don't think I'd ever. I don't have anything on my reel that's in that realm. But I'm like, I'm gonna try it. Yeah, nice. You know, it's as if people who do commercial work they do spec projects. Yeah. So you run into filmmakers who have like narrative sh projects. Like, hey, we got a short. Yeah. We have this crazy idea. You yeah. game. I'm yeah. Like, yeah. You know what? You called me in. Let's do this. Cool. You know, I, yeah. I love what they're thinking and we go for it. So we're trying to work that out. Nice. So, that's really cool. And that's pushing, yeah. that's pushing your visual envelope a little bit. 100%. Okay. Yeah. Visual lighting layout. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to be more DP because they, they tell, I've learned that to be a DP, you have to, have to like hand the camera off to someone else to do it. Pretty much. And you're stepping behind the monitor and be like, okay, I got this. I love to operate though. I mean, love yeah. operating. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, uh, at the same time, yeah, stepping back does open up a different realm of your brain. Mm. Yeah, you know? because now you're focused a lot more on like focused on exactly what the visual should be, and you're not focused on mm -hmm. opping. actually opping, which like, a whole job on its own. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. true. You, yeah. you ever do like you ever do a project and you're you're the only person shooting, <clears throat> and then you're like sitting there getting the you're getting into it like this looks really great. Then you look in the corner like crap. There's the damn wire. Oh yeah. There's oh, a gaff my tape. God. Like, of there's the light, and you're just slowly moving the camera, <laughs> and you're like you're tweaking yourself. Someone looks at you to look at like your contortion. Like yeah. I got this. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. So that's what happens, yeah, right? Yeah. And, and if you were to DP, but like, hey, you you can walkie talk it to your guy or like tap your shoulder. Hey, scoot over. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. yeah, scoot down a bit. So you, you can't know? pay attention to everything. That's it. Yeah. When you're in your head thinking oh. about everything else. Yeah. That's very true. There's so, a couple of marketing projects I have. Like they, they bring me as like a cam op DP and I'm like, yeah. okay, I can do this, but if I'm missing something, it's because you have me doing both. That's true. You know, that's so. interesting. That's yeah. interesting because I think a lot of DP, especially DPs who are not in the narrative world are mm. not used to that. They're used to also opping. It's even in the commercial, even like high end commercial, uh, people who are repped are still opping at the same time. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. narrative, I know it's very different and I know the approach is very different and, you know, for me personally, I would love to jump into the narrative world one day because it's just the I think there's so much more creative freedom in it. And it's like you you enter a different mind state, I find, when you're lighting narrative versus lighting a commercial. Because commercial, you're serving regardless, you're serving like a product mm -hmm. that whatever business is trying to sell. Whereas a narrative, you can really dive and get experimental with a lot of things. I find commercial even, especially even in the high end, like there's stuff that you're like, you know. I want to make this a little bit more darker, you know, and it's almost always a no, <laughs> you know, it's almost always like, you know, nah, we need some fill in there. Yeah. But in narrative, I feel like you can do whatever you want as long as it fits a story. Right. 
And sure. I find that that's, I don't know, to me, that's a lot more appealing. Yeah, you know, I like the narrative side because there's a little bit of leadership to that. Right. I'm a big fan mm. of leadership. I'm a big mm. fan of being able to have a team that I, in, in quotations, command. Right. But not command. Uh, so to me, whenever I look at DPing, you know, I met a few new people. I actually was invited, which is kind of cool. I was invited to kind of talk to a bunch of interns um, at White's. And they're like, hey, uh -huh. Ray, well, can you come into White's and talk about your cinematography? Cool. And I was like, interns, like, sure. Yeah. And they asked us, like, what's the favorite part about DPing that you like? And I said, honestly, leadership. To be able to put together a team of 20 yeah. to 50 to 100 people and get us all on the same board visually yeah. and make that look beautiful, that to me makes me happy yeah um wow. someone asked us like why don't you direct then i was like well i mean director photography is directing it, but yeah you are it's a director. sort of it's different sort of right, yeah, yeah it's a different level i was yeah. like i don't want to deal with actors yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. i like actors i yeah. have friends who are actors i love all of them yeah. but it's like that's you know i want to direct people who understand lighting and, and cameras and mm. motion and movement mm. and scaffolding you know i love those guys yeah, yeah. <laughs> um yeah yeah scaffolding is a big thing um yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no i love that part and i and i do love the fact that i can i can take a team and we can grow together you know that yeah. to me is like that's a joy for me honestly um and that comes from me you know when i lived in texas i did run a little company and i had a team of people that that i ran with and mm. it was just fun you mm. know mm. but i never looked at them and it's something I see DPs doing these days who are who are at that position, like some some of them. And you probably hear this on some levels where there's DPs who are like, in a lack of a better term, ass. Yeah. An yeah. Ass, right? Yeah. Because they're they're so high up there, just like, you need to do this. You need to do this. Hey, you didn't get this light going or whatever. And it's like, man, calm down, bud. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's we're just here to enjoy a really good time. And yeah. I, I wanna and a leader doesn't doesn't yell at you or demand or commands you. Yes. They kind of like show you how it works and you go forward. They're like, hey, look, you you look like you're struggling with the three hundred D's like you know, set up in a little clamp on it. Yeah. Let me just show you how it works. From this point on, you're good to go. I love that. You exactly. know? I love that. And that's yeah. it, right? Yeah. And I, I love, love getting my hands dirty in that. I, I mean, I yeah. still love touching lighting. So, 100%, yeah. yeah. And so when I touch lighting, or I, I meet a lot of, um, so I'm still on the indie side. I'm not on the IATSE side. Right. Which, that's a long story. Anyways. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I've my, I have my <laughs> application in, but that's another story as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's, there, I'm getting these like calls. We could talk about that in a minute. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm not trying to be mean to IATSE. But yeah. like on the indie side, you get a lot of people who are green, right? A yeah. lot of people who are just fresh out of university or, yeah. or just trying to get into lighting in general. And they can be all kinds of levels. You know, there's mm -hmm. even a... I have, a, I have a gentleman, he left to be a dentist to get into our industry, and he's trying to learn lighting. Wow. Really cool guy, though. Yeah. And he was he was so timid on on like he's like oh I don't know how this works I don't know that and I would, did a shoot I think a couple weeks ago, and I came up to him and was like hey man, calm down, you know don't don't ever feel like you never have to ask me a question I'm happy to answer it for you yeah you know mm -hmm. just just tap my shoulder man just you know if lunchtime tap my shoulder break time tap my shoulder if you see me running around I am thinking really hard yeah but tap my shoulder yeah you know I'd rather you learn now. Then in two days later, I'm like, dude, why didn't you put that freaking light up? You know, yeah, I'm like, yeah. and if he's like, well, I don't never, it's like, all you have to do is stop and ask me, man. Yeah. That's all it is, right? Mm -hmm. Once you do it once and you show it to him how to do it, bam. And yeah. I showed, I, I think I showed him, we had some HMIs, a um, bunch of HMIs. Like, I taught him, like, okay, when you touch this thing, don't touch it with your hands. You know, yeah. use use gloves, yeah. put this up here, don't turn it on and off. It's not an LED light, it has to warm up and warm down mm -hmm. or cool down. And uh, he learned all that stuff like in a day. And he's yeah. like, respect. And at the end of the, it was like four day shoot. At the end of it, he came to me and goes, thank you so much. I was like, no, no, don't ever thank me. Just take it in, learn a little bit, keep moving. You're going to stumble. Run with as it. long as you have people that are willing to help you out, just keep moving. That's, That's cool. all it is. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's why people love working with you, man. Like you Aww. have that, like it's, it's. <laughs> You're nice, but you're also like a good leader. You're a strong leader. Mm. So that's like, that's a hard combination to get, you know? And yeah. leadership is probably the most underrated attribute for DPs. Very true. I think a lot mm -hmm. of DPs mm -hmm. are so focused on image making mm -hmm. that they don't realize that you're also a leader and you need to be a good communicator, a good leader, right. take accountability, make sure your team's morale is good, teaching young yeah. people like you do. Oh. Like, I think that is a huge part of being a DP more, I would say even more so, if not equal to how good your image is. Cause you know, the way I say it is always like, once you hit a certain level, everyone's good. Like that's your profession, you know, like being a good, making a good image. I mean, yeah, you are paid to do that. You know, like you should do that, but not yeah. everyone's paid to be a good leader or they don't right. think they are. Right. Right. So I think that's very underrated and I, and I admire that. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, you have to do it from pre-production through production through post, right? Yeah, you have to exactly. Keep, you have to Throughout keep throughout the whole thing. You have to keep, but it's it's leadership. If you do it correctly, is a collaborative effort. Yes, you know, yeah. and that's something. You hear the word collaboration is is a word that gets thrown around 
so badly, honestly. Yeah. It was like, uh, oh, we're collaborating. And I was like, yeah, but you're also yelling. Yeah, you <laughs> so, tell me what to do. Yeah, just yeah. slow it down. Yeah. I, yeah. I love the fact, I, my wife pointed out to me, and I was like, oh, I didn't know I did that. She goes, you realize you flex your, your emotions based on the person that you're talking to mm. and the way that you talk to them. Okay. So I've had mm. people like, like balls at the walls yell at me for like, and I sit there and pause and look at them. I'm like, would you like a Snickers bar now? You know, <laughs> like, uh, are you, are you, are you good? Do you feel better? <laughs> and I take it in, but then. Snickers then, though, eh? Yeah, I know. Well, hey, you gotta, you gotta break, gotta break it. Right. But, um, yeah, so like, it's, I take it in and I'm like, okay, I tr- I've learned actually my, I've changed my philosophy around the past like two or three years mm. where I'm starting to meet a lot of people who have a lot of anger inside of them wow. and, and they, they exert it wow. to all the people, their, their crew. And I met a few directors like that. Good people. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to start with that. They're very good people, honestly, and they have really cool visions. But they they also have a have something when they're when they're in a mindset. Right. They're just yelling right. it, you know, yelling wow. it out like I really wanted this, and they're you know I've had yeah. a couple times where like they yelled at actors. I've, I, I, wow. they've, I had a first AC cry cry on set one time because she got yelled at, and I was no like, wow. I pulled her aside like, look, big hug, <laughs> you'll be all right, you'll be fine, you'll make it through. And what I what I've what I've told people is whenever like oh but I, they're, they're such a they're such an ass or they're such a bitch or whatever you want to call it you never name it i'm saying no no think about this for a second mm. what have they gone through to get to where they're at how long have they been in the industry like this oh. one person i met um i've been searching for quite some time and and um she's also of a different color and i'm like you know what i'm gonna respect the fact that you've gone through a lot of adversity in your in your in the industry you know we're all talking about the bipoc crap and you, you're you're a woman in this industry. Yeah. It's very tough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And respectfully, if I step myself out of my own shoes to watch what you're going through, I'm gonna respect that you're angry because of this. And I and I, I said that to her, and she just kind of like stopped and stared at me and backed up and says, "No one's ever paused me like that." And I was like, "Well, look, you know, if you're gonna be mad, yell at me all you want, but yell at me and not the team. I'm I am your other leader. That's I a can good take leadership it, right there. Yeah. But I'd rather you yell at me and not the team because I don't want the team to start yapping." Yeah, especially the young younger team, they start getting into it. You know, yeah, nothing yeah. against young young crew. It's but it's just, just uh, emotional, more emotional. It's than yeah, yeah. yeah. Once you've been in the game a long time and you have kids, you uh, you, <laughs> <laughs> you tend to handle a lot more yeah, anger management, and yelling at. Yeah, yeah. That's true. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah. Like, okay, got it. I, I, I understand now. I got it. So yeah, yeah. So that's really that's really it. So I've, I've started changing my philosophy. Like every time someone has like like any kind of emotion, whether they're sad, they're mad, or even if they're super ha- super happy. I still look into it. even the happy people I still look into because happy people can hide away, for sure. You know some of their mental right. st- instabilities because some of the, they, they step back and they're like rubbing their head, and then they're back yeah. to smiling like okay, there's something up. Yeah, yeah. You right. So, you, so you're always like you're, I guess, taking notice of like what people are actually going through on yeah. set, yeah. so you can I, actually help mitigate any issues. Hopefully before they happen, but I, obviously after they happen, you know, you can I'll still manage it. Well, yeah, that's why I love pre-production. Uh, you get to meet everybody pre-production. You get to meet your, your crew. Yeah, get the to way know them that you're, and you get them to get comfortable with them. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then you can you can get their mannerisms and make them feel mm-hmm. comfortable when yeah. they're on sets because that's on cool. set there's always a bump in the road. I tell everybody's like, that's no, true. there's not a single set out there that has a perfect road. Yeah, there's 100%. always like a bump. It's like crap, uh, we've just broken an SDI cable. No worries, we got one in the back. You know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. happens all the time. Uh, yeah, yeah, like do fell. It's okay. There's gaff tape. Go nuts. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> constant problem solving. <laughs> that's all the time. it. That's yeah. it. You know, it's just money. Yeah. Um. <laughs> you know, we can make it happen. Yeah. So there's always uh, solutions. I love making finding solutions. Yeah. And and that's something I find a lot of people. Nothing against the union. The union people get like, oh, we don't have the safety thing. We have to now do this whole write up. I was like, why? It's just a clamp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this whole write up. <laughs> That's really funny. It's just a clamp. Just put it up. No worries. Yeah. I just close my eyes. We're going to jump on that ladder you know, whatever, or that, that table or whatever you're going to jump yeah. on to just put it together. But that's a funny yeah. balance because, like, you get yeah. people like that who are like, oh, this is yeah. not safe. We have to do it like this. And then you get where they're coming from. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you're under the pressure of production where you're like, if we're gonna make the day, we gotta get this up there right yeah. now, and can, you know, yeah. so it's finding that balance and yeah. for sure, you know, for sure. I've ran into that a lot, yeah. You know, and you're like, okay, let's let's take a second to think about it. Exactly. Um, you guys had Eddie on 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 the show, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Shout yeah. out to Eddie. Eh? Yeah, 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 Eddie. No, yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah. Well, we both did a shoot. Um, I think it was last year. Uh, last year, and and the the deep he was the DP, so I was just helping him out. I was like, yeah, man, nice, I'll, cool. I'll, I'll I'll cam for you. So Sick. It'd be really a lot of fun. He goes, sure. Yeah. Um, I love doing that for for like people. They're saying, oh, if I'm bored, or yeah. I'm, I'm not. I'm, if I'm slow, I'll jump and cam up for yeah, other why people. Not? That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I've even gaff for other people. You know, yeah, I don't I don't gaff for long yeah. days, but I'll do like one or two days for some people. They're like, yeah, yeah two three days, sure. It's not gonna hurt me. Right? Yeah. No. Um. I don't put it on my reel because I was like, I'm, I'm not trying to be a gaffer. Yeah. But um. 
Yeah, for one of his shoots, they, they had a shot they wanted to get from like an overhead angle is what the director wanted. And I was, too, I was like, what do you think? I was like, Let's get the ladder. Just, you know, get the ladder, put the hi-hat up there. I'll just, we'll just ratchet strap the crap out of it <laughs> and, and let hilarious. it, let it ride. And it looked great. Wow. It looked yeah. great. And he just looked at me, I was like, yeah, we'll just get one of the PAs, just hold the bottom of the ladder and you go up. Wow. <laughs> I sent him up though. <laughs> I, I was like, I, I ratchet strapped him, I sent him so up. So you went from <laughs> helicopter, to, I'm not going on the ladder. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> since, since your wife was like, hey, yeah. no ladder. Well, I went up to the ladder to ratchet strap and make sure it was good, but then oh, he okay. shot it. I was like, you shoot it. You're, That's fair. You're, you're, That's you're, so you're, your front ain't D, you know, DP. Fair. I'm going to go That's back true. down to the bottom and get the close up shot with like a long lens you know? <laughs> that's so funny that's yeah. crazy because Reddy's gonna be working with us on our spec shoot and next End of week. the month yeah nice yeah, month. nice yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah great guy great yeah, guy yeah yeah it's so cool yes. connecting with people he's, like he's that. A, yeah his energy is really good yeah 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 we get along we, we, we're always talking about like where we're gonna go eat next and i was like i don't know we'll find a new place i always yeah. find a new restaurant yeah it's an asian thing to do that is an asian thing that's what we do that's what we do oh man we're eating bro that's it that's it where's the good rice at you know that's this is actually more lighthearted question we've been talking about this yeah after like long shoot days yeah sometimes we have a spot like the spot you pick up food at yeah do you have a spot no, <laughs> you don't have a spot. No, you no. don't have a spot. I don't. Ha- I don't have a spot. No, it's honestly whenever I get out and I'm like hungry, I'm, I, I'll type in what I want. I'm like, okay, oh. what's around me that's open? What do you like then? What's like, like, yeah, like. Oh you... man, it depends on how the day went. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> let's if, say, let's if say it's a rough day. It's rough a long day. day. A long oh, day. Uh, I gotta go tacos. Oh tacos. yeah, <laughs> tacos. Nice. Tacos are good days. Tacos. Too, Ta- tacos is a long day. If it was a good day, rice. Rice. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like because you can you can enjoy like. That's true. How about oh, sushi? You said sushi? Oh, no, seasick. Seasick. Yeah, or what's it called? Seasick? It's a Filipino oh, food. Oh, right. Okay. I'm I was not like, Filipino, wait, wait. so no, I don't no, know. No, no, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's the yeah. pork. It's yeah, the pork. yeah, the pork. Oh, the pork. That's yes. amazing. I love yes. that. Yes, so. honestly, I was just thinking of like, like standard rice and like any kind of meat, honestly. Yeah, simple. Oh, yeah. Just white, simple rice That's like nice. JP, and any JP's kind of like meat. That. I'm getting hungry now. It's good. I love food. I love food. I'm on a different diet right now. I'm not eating carbs and stuff, and I'm like, no rice. This guy's eating Portuguese tarts. I'm like, oh, Jesus. Yeah. But um, I was going to ask, you were talking about like relationships on set. I'm getting more into directing now. Nice. What do you look for like in the relationship with the director? Like what do you, yeah. what are some things that you typically like or gravitate towards? Mm, that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, I don't know, honestly, as long as mm. we have a really good chit chat. Yeah. One of my projects I did last year, um, I, I was interviewed for, uh, I didn't get the project because they were working for women at the end of it. Mm. And respect. Gotcha. Nice. Yeah. So I gave him a really cool woman cinematographer and she got the job. Oh, cool. cool. But, um, uh, I was uh, talking to the director and they were interviewing me and she goes, she goes, so what do you want to talk about? To-? And first time we met each other, uh, we were doing it through Zoom because she lived in New York. And I was like, well, let's put aside your script. Let's just talk. Like, what do you like? And yeah. she goes, what's going on here? I was like, no, let's, no, really. If if we're going to be working with each other, like we said earlier, we're yeah. going to be working with each other for X amount of days. Right. Mm-hmm. And if you and I can't have a standard conversation <laughs> about food, yeah. travel, whatever how yeah. hot it is and yeah. we start we start like not liking each other's system we're not going to care for each other so it's true. It's, it's re- the, true. the connection to me is important yeah because you're going to be sitting with that director for pre-production through production through post-production yeah. so what a two day to a four week production it looks like turns into like almost a half a year yeah because you're doing all this with them that's mm-hmm. true. And and you're you're like their you're like their partner in crime throughout the whole film mm-hmm. or whole project, whatever. So that's yeah. important. And I so I always find that as a very important connection. Yeah. Um, even on small ones. And so I've always had to chat. It's like yeah. you gotta create that friendship mm-hmm. first. Yeah, right? in a lot of ways. 100%. You know? like, I mean, uh, Anthony going into directing makes a lot of sense and, and and I knew that he always had the talent to do so. Yeah. And you know, and and just being like his business partner, but also his future DP. You know, a lot of ways, it's like being with him. Me and him have sat in like pre lights where like I'd sit there and I'd be like, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know what I'm gonna do, man. I was sitting there like I have no idea. I'm trying to figure it out. Um, it's like like we're we're going through some of the toughest times together. We're sitting there together like two guys with one light on because that's the only light that I'm like I know that light's going there, but I don't know where the rest is going. <laughs> yeah. And we just stare at each other, and be like, call times at eight and it's midnight. Yeah. yeah. You know, and we went through some wars together to figure it out. Like, all right, I guess tomorrow. So here's the plan. We got to act like we know what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> we go in tomorrow. It's usually like lighting big spaces. Yeah, it's like, it's like big like, spaces yeah. with like limited no budget crew. and like yeah. not limited crew. And we're just oh, like, those oh, are my favorite, I'm, though. Yeah, you just tackle They're it. fun problems. Yeah. Yeah. It's Especially fun when problems. you nail it, you're like, how did, how did do we that? do that? How did we end up? It's like, yeah, that looks good. All right. <laughs> happy accidents become a fun thing. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, and we've been through it's a, a good lot learning, of happy though. accidents. It's a good learning. Whenever you put yourself in like, sure. I was talking to another director and he was talking about he was nervous about doing his next project he's doing. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know, nervous is a great thing. It means you really want to, you want to protect that, that and project. And you care for you it. Care, yeah. You care for mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. And, and you're, you, you're actually more ready than you think. Yeah. When you're nervous. Oh, because really? you put so much effort 
into into where you're at. Like, I'm nervous because I, I don't know. Is this in place? Like, you probably already did it. Yeah. Is this in place? You probably already did it. Yeah. You know, yeah. Is this in place? So you're thinking about every angle. Jeez. You know? Yeah. So when nervous kicks you in, it's like, oh, I'm good. So that's it's a good it's a good feeling to have. So if yeah. you when you get in that nervous moment as a director, I'm nervous right now, so it's good. It's a good feeling. Oh yeah, he's yeah, very see? anxious about this this yeah. this shit. Yeah, yeah. It's good. It's, yeah, it's good. Yeah. good man. But it's a good thing. Yeah, as I'm saying, like you, you can't do. avoid it. It's just you yeah. gotta do it. You gotta get into it. You <laughs> like, jump in. I think I would be nervous as DP if he wasn't nervous. Especially since he's the first mm. first time directing, you should right. be nervous. Yeah. Like you should f- be feeling that Directorial anxiety. Real debut. Look yeah, at this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Man. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm getting first hand on this. Listen, there's one on here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, I'm never, if, I, if I'm not here on the podcast ever again and I, I went to Budapest or something <laughs> and I left the industry, <laughs> excommunicated myself, then you know why the shoot didn't go well. But sitting yeah. on like the Himalayan mountains, like, mm, <laughs> yeah. why am I go director? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, in your given experience on yeah. set, what's like one attribute? that you love about directors that directors will do with you and one attribute that you're kind of like ah it's kind of my biggest pet peeve Ooh, Ooh. Pet, well, peeve, uh, uh, pet peeves my goodness let me think about that for a second they don't get tacos with you after. <laughs> <laughs> get tacos with you. <laughs> um yeah so i guess one of the pet peeves for me for a director i'll go that route because i think that's easier to pull out which is sad because it's not not as often as this happened right um when a director's like okay this is what i want and then they walk away Oh well, like well, well hmm. okay. Like they, they <laughs> What do you mean? Like that that's happened a couple of times. Really? Um they'll come to me Just do it pretty much, figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I love to collaborate with the director. Like, hey, it's your vision, it's your story. Yeah. I yeah. but most of the times it's like pre production. I've done a lot of pre production with. Um then it's really great. It's like, okay, you can walk away because we've already talked about it. And that's they'll right. they'll bring that up. Yeah. But I've had like quick projects, like quick shorts. Yeah. And it's like we haven't really fully had a full pre production about this one section. We kept fighting over this one, like you like you two talking about the midnight thing. Yeah. And I was like, we never figured it out. It's like, yeah, you know what? You do it. He just, it just walks away. And I'm like, oh, um. <laughs> and then like I'm paused and I'm staring there. Wow. With like, <laughs> like, I look like those cartoons with question marks and like, like little, little, little yeah. circle balls. Like, what the heck is going on? And everyone's like, tapping. like, Ray, what do you think? I was like, give me a second. Just let me, You're processing let me, this. Let me process this real quick. Let me figure out this out. Yeah. So that, that's a little bit of a pet peeve. Another pet yeah. peeve of mine that, that has happened a couple of times is when we've done a ton of work in pre-prep mm. and pre-pro mm. and then you get to shoot and it's like, whoosh, like wipe it. I want to do this idea instead. Like, oh yeah, that's annoying. Uh, yeah. We didn't talk. Okay. Can't imagine that. That's yeah, that's, that's insane. It happens a lot, and oh, so no. well, especially um, because we were talking about like things happen, right? Yeah. Things things stumble on, and during the pandemic, things stumble a lot because of people getting COVID. Yeah, yeah. Actors got COVID, and when you do a project where you have actor union actors, right? You you can't pull in more union actors. Yeah, you have yeah. to go through a whole number. So then we have to rearrange everything, and there've been a couple of times. I did that three season thing. There's a, there's a show I did called Pink Is In. It's on Bell, yep. uh, which actually got on Amazon, which is kind of cool. But anyways, they yeah. we had a couple of times where we had some of the actors got COVID on some of the scenes. So mm. like, uh, most of the day is based around that person. Oh man, <laughs> what, what are we doing? And yeah. so myself, the director, we both at one time just sat back, sat down, we little, little children, like, where's the popsicle stand going to come? You know, like <laughs> looking at the wall, like, yeah. give me a second. And I mean, it does eventually get there, but yeah, there are times when that happens with directors who are just like, you know what, I just want to, I want to just start all over. I was like, we're starting all over, and we have like 30 minutes before we go back to camera, <laughs> you know. Man. So, yeah. And like, then at that point, I lean on my team. I'm like, lean on the camera operator, the gaffer, mm-hmm. and be like, hey, this this is what's going on. And they're like, okay. And it's kind of cool because if you have gaffers who are also camera operators, mm-hmm. you have camera operators who also love lighting. Yeah. Then all three of us like a triangle. Like, okay, bring in the trifecta. Yeah, that's cool. The brain comes the in. Creative, the creative pa- uh, improvision yeah. starts coming I know. in. Bring bring in the power the power yeah. rings. Let's go. You know, <laughs> yeah. let's make yeah. this happen. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and then it cool. then it it works out. It's worked out every single time like that, which is really wow. nice. Which is like talking about relationships. The director DP relationship one one major part. Yeah. The, then your team, and like if you are DP with the camera operators, you and the camera operators, mm-hmm. big thing. If you're operating as a DP, you and your first AC are like yeah. full on. You gotta be, you gotta yes. be in sync, right? Yeah. You're like, hey, I'm about to move over here. You gotta rack focus exactly. to this thing, right? Yeah. If you and the lighting person are in sync, they'd be like, hey, I want to kind of put the light on the, you know, I got you, you yeah. know, and then they they put it in spots, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, whatever the level, there's always that level of re- relationship that you have to always keep in contact with. Yeah. Moving, so it's a moving game. I love it. Yeah, and it's constant, constant. Oh, yeah. It's just like oh, yeah. nonstop. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. And you got to be smiling and laughing the whole time. Yeah. It's almost kind of nice. Like, it's almost a shoot without that kind of chaos would be like, I'm kind of. <laughs> Something's wrong. Yeah. This is corporate. <laughs> are we, we're doing corporate again. We're doing corporate again? Yeah. We're yeah. sending it behind the camera just to record. Yeah. That's it. You kind of like, it's fun to have the challenges, you know, at the end of the day where you look back like, shit, we, we got through that. Mm-hmm. But you need the team. Yeah. Like, you need the team for that in the relationships. I mean, I've done things where I've, I didn't have a team. <laughs> 
Uh, I'm, <laughs> you just gotta yeah. find it, figure it out yourself. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm doing a I'm doing a doc for with the, with the bud right now, and um, it's a really cool documentary. But he has no money, and I was like, mm. "Look, man, I'm, I'm helping you out." Okay. Mm-hmm. And cool. and we've been doing things ourselves, and it's funny. The first time I helped him out, um, we're still working on the documentary. But like, the beginning, I went from like a big set, and I like, "Oh yeah, we're trying, we're doing your doc tomorrow, right?" He goes, "Yeah, yeah." I was like, "I got you." And then I brought my cart with like all this gear. Yeah. I, and then I got there, I was like, "Crap, I'm doing this by myself." <laughs> I yeah. totally forgot that. Oh, and I was like, man. hold on, let me just take out the one stand here. Oh. Let me let me find a window. Like I, I had to think about it. I had to step back in my own world, be like, I forgot I don't have a team. And then yeah. I had to look at the window, be like, oh, I like the window light. I, I stuck him there before the talent got there. We put a light in the background, just shot it back before the spotlight hit him, and then I'm done. <laughs> yeah. I put a thing, I was like, and this whole cart full of gear that's not even being used. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> and I was like, he goes, Why you brought a lot of gear? I was like, Yeah, I only use like three stands. Yeah. Or two stands really yeah. and a light. That's that's it. You know. That's so, crazy. So how that, do you approach like um like let's say someone has no budget? Mm-hmm. Um what like at this stage in your career, what like kind of like helps you decide if doing like a project like that is worthwhile or what like what are you looking for in like projects that would make you do it basically for free or you know, a, a lowered rate or something like that? Yeah. So for me it's always like looking at where I'm at in my career, you know, mm-hmm. it's a, I think everyone should do that in general and yeah. and decide on where do you want to go next? Mm-hmm. You know, let's say I, lo- I love cars, right? So let's mm-hmm. say if you were wanted to be a commercial car guy and you want to work for Audi in the next mm-hmm. like two years, two months, let's say, mm-hmm. like I want to make this really badass Audi commercial. Yeah. Then you better get with people who are like, hey, I've got this Audi commercial idea. I don't know if you want to do it. It's like, dude, let's do it. Yeah. Who cares what the money is, yeah. you know? But then put your best foot forward on, on the project. So mm-hmm. I've actually had a lot of people ask me um, who are no budget, zero budget stuff. And I'm like, yeah, then it's shorts, right? And yeah. I was like, okay, let me read your script and I'll check it out and see cool. if it's something I want to be a part of. Yeah. Um, and right now I'm, I'm, I'm actually currently looking for more like dramatic pieces yep. or, or true to life pieces. I love true to life yeah. pieces. I, wanna, yeah, I, wanna, yeah, I want too. someone to tear on my me freaking too. I, want, I, want, I want to see that tear come down oh, hard. Yeah. Yeah. Not just a single. I want it to keep yeah. on rolling. You know? <laughs> I want it to go. <laughs> like two yeah. minutes of tears. Oh my God. I was like, I, yeah, I want, I want every, every man to cry first and then the woman. You know? I want, that's that level. Yeah. yeah. Put the water. Forget, forget the napkin. Just put waters at the end of every aisle. Yeah. But, <laughs> no, I want that, right? So there's a project I met. Um, there's, a, there's a gentleman he made that's really cool. I was like, okay, this could be a teary moment. I love it. Cool. And uh, and I said, can I DP it? And kind of bring him some time ops. And he goes, oh, you're not going to shoot it? I was like, no, we're going to shoot it. But I want it to look like this. So I get my teary moment. So I want a tear looking at the monitor with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I want my cam ops to shoot it. That's, that's, yeah, yeah. that's funny. But um, yeah, so that's whenever someone comes with me with a project, I say, let me read your script. Mm. Let me see if I feel it. Mm. And then if I don't feel it, I tell him. Mm-hmm. And I tell him, like, no disrespect. It's just not for me right yeah. now. You yeah, know, makes sense. I, um, I bet you someone would definitely be game to do it. But for me right now, I can't help you with it. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, when you run into no budget people, they're obviously, they're always like, like hey, do you, have, do you have gear? Do you have stuff All I can time. use? Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, I got you. Yeah, you know, yeah. I got of course, you. Yeah, of course. But the cool thing about that I've learned being in Toronto is actually all the rental houses are usually like, What's your budget? We'll we'll hook you up. Yeah, which is so freaking. That's cool. amazing. Yeah, yeah. I love that. That's one of the, one of the things in here I've learned. I was like, oh my gosh, and I it really blew my mind when I ran to like the big guys. Like you guys are close to Sims here. Yeah, or Keslo now. Um, they're no longer Sims. I can't say that word anymore. But like they they're like, hey Bray, we'll, we'll what, what's your budget? We'll work something out. You know, and Panavision did the same thing. Wow, I did a project with them. Um, you know, talking to them a little bit. They're like, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll see what we can work with you on that. And every, no matter what level, even Whites does it. Mm-hmm. Every level you are, they're they're usually. Because they, they know they were yeah. they were once beginner filmmakers or once homo filmmakers and they yeah. they're always like look we can't give you free stuff yeah but we can we can help you out we, we can, can we can try to find a package that package that fits yeah that sense. fits within that that realm yeah. you're going for it's like it's like you give a little we'll give a little you give a little <clears> it's yeah. like you know look I've got a hundred bucks well, well make it two hundred we'll give you this thing yeah yeah and then we'll come down we'll find something that's in that realm. Um, and I do that with there's a really cool lighting location over I live over towards Hamilton I'm Burlington Hamilton oh, okay and uh, and over there, there's a guy there that, that he's like, well, look, you, you're looking for Leco lights, but you want that expensive one? I got you these old stuff. Does the exact same thing, but they're just older. Just mm-hmm. takes a little longer to t- light up. It's like, perfect. Let's do it. Nice. Because nice. it's just imagery. As long as the, the quality of the light's there, game. Yes. Let's make it happen. Yeah, you know? exactly. So let's talk about a little bit about lights. Yeah. Favorite lights. I know we were talking a little bit before mm-hmm. we were recording this cool. podcast a little bit. <laughs> A little bit of secret, top of secret interference, dope. a little bit of secret information that we're not going to share. No, no, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're cutting uh, that part out. <laughs> you, you, you flash a frame Jump. of the of the product. Yeah, <laughs> just like really quickly. They, they half, no one's ever going to pause it. Half a frame. It's got to be. It's going to be like one half one exactly. second. <laughs> and it's somewhere in the episode. <laughs> You have to watch the whole thing to find it. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, need that. You know, need that engagement. Your favorite lights. 
Let's talk a little bit about your favorite yeah, lights. Yeah, anything, your anything with a Leco attachment to so it you're is my. Uh, I'm huge Leco guy. Fan. I love projectors because yeah. I love how projectors can bounce. Yeah, and you knew that. I think when you and I were, I was I was in the yeah. Leco's, and so Leco's to me, when it comes to the quality of light, um, when you look at any kind of light looking at you and shooting at you, it's being direct lit, lit at you. When you walk outside. The sun is not directly hitting you. You're getting bounced off of a building, Made everywhere, of, of a tree, yeah. <laughs> you name it, right? Yeah. And so the world of bounce is very interesting when you just you walk. I walk around, I look like an idiot. So I'm just like, oh, look, this, this is neat. My wife is like walking on the wall. I do the same thing all and the she's time. Like, what the hell's wrong with you? I was like, I'm just looking at the light. It looks pretty. I'll take goes, a photo of a wall and send it to him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah look at this. Yeah, yeah look at man. this. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> that's expensive. <laughs> <laughs> this is very expensive. You know how much people pay for this? <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, Look so at the shadow quality for sure, for yeah. sure, and I love that. I honestly yeah. love it. I, I love recreating the sunlight through bounce versus mm. like putting a. A lot of people. Uh, let's go with the one a lot of people like to do. They take these humongous source lights, the twelve hundred D, eight hundred D, nan lights, aperture, whatever, and they put it outside a window. They blast it into the window. It's like there's my sunlight. Yeah, yeah. I was like, have you ever tried doing a bounce off of there? Exactly. Coming in, you know, yep. like I started getting into the CRLS world and like, oh my god, it's so much. Fun. I have right there. Yeah. Oh, the go kit. Yeah, they're so much fun. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. I, I rent it. I, I need to buy myself a set. But um, when I when I was like trying to decide if I want to get into it, I went to like Home Depot and bought all kinds of different kinds of metals. Oh, nice. And I would Remember cut this. them up. Yes. And I shaved. I still have them. Oh, cool. And I still use them too. Nice. So like, uh, I I'll get like the flat plates, the little baby plates. Yeah. Yep. I'll stick them on nine of them, stick them in the air. It's like, it's going to fall. It's like, it cost me like two bucks. It's okay. <laughs> it's, yeah. You know, just don't be underneath it. It's pretty sharp. Yeah. <laughs> it's they are sharp. I mean, I, I did gaff Tape the crap it, yeah. out of it. So I, I, I put some PVC yeah, pipe yeah. on it. So I, I spent a little bit extra money. So it's like $5 now. But yeah. anyways, <laughs> yeah. I love the reflective. Reflective light gives a little bit different location on your, on your skin tone. Yes. And with LED, we're talking about LED technology, yeah. right? And the LED technology for me... Um, when you use Leco's or any, and if you open up, if you take a, a spotlight mount out of the aperture and you take off the Leco attachment in the front of it, you'll see all the LEDs. Mm. Like you'll mm. see every single one of them. All the bunch and all up. your exactly. And yeah. then if you put the thing back on, it it kind of turns it back into one. But there's still there's still weird shadowing, and that's something all yeah. the YouTubers have pointed out. It's like, yeah, yeah when you do this Leco, it has a weird oh. extra shadowing. Mm -hmm. If you bounce it, it becomes a one source. Then it actually merges yes. it all together. Wow. Yeah direct at mm -hmm. you like any of these lights that are led shooting at you they're all shooting at you with like little bitty lights hitting you right mm -hmm. and you're not minuscule seeing it until you get in a post yeah you mm -hmm. don't fully notice it until you get in a post start coloring yeah. so if you bounce it off something it actually turns into a single source light yeah mm -hmm. like all that merge becomes yeah it's flat and then it's bounced back wow. yeah and it actually looks quality even better yeah so as close to the sun natural sun as possible because like you said the sun is yeah. bouncing everywhere it before is. it hits its actual yeah. surface that you're looking at yeah. so essentially you want to do the same thing the law of physics and the law of light is a similar mm -hmm. thing as opposed to just taking a, a 55 reflector dish and sticking it on a 1200 and being like that's it smash that's it through and like the light curve everyone talks about oh, i can't believe i don't remember the name of the light curve right now but the light curve is like that. You know, when you bounce it off, you can actually have someone who's like being lit, even in an interview. I've yeah. even bounced in an interview, which is crazy. You're like, it's a lot of. I've done that before too, and I've got called out. I was like, oh, you're over the top. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, a, I have many times. Yeah. Uh, I laugh at that. I'm yeah. like, ha, 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 ha. do you like the look? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good. <laughs> it looks good, doesn't yeah. it? Huh? Yeah, yeah. That's um, funny. I'm yeah. actually doing one like that on Monday, which is yeah, funny. Yeah. I'm doing a commercial and doing that. But, uh, but yeah, so same thing. It's like, I, when, um, where was I going with this? Like, yeah, it's the bouncing light. When you do the curve, and mm -hmm. if someone's, like, moving back and forth, you're trying to get that really cool contrasty look. Mm -hmm. When when there's a light that's straight on you, the moment they move, like, even a you know a few inches back, that light drops so fast, they go light to dark. Inverse square. Light, inverse right? square the inverse square law. Inverse square law. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, there's the word. Yeah. He knows it. Um, yeah. yeah, the inverse square law. Yeah, yeah. So, but if you do the bounce, the inverse square, you're more in the center of that versus on the top yes. of it. Yes. And so moving that bounce down, you still get the nice quality of single source light. Yeah. But now they can move around, and they still look. Clear. And, and that's why they that's that's why they talk about like one of my mentors online has taught me like when you look at nighttime ambient and you try to create room tone that's the hardest thing to do because nighttime is actually hard light that's the funny the moon is hard light so it's not soft so it typically it gets mistaken as soft mm -hmm. and to create an even ambient you need some massive power from very far away because then you got to get that smooth ambient if you just shoot a light through you're gonna get hot spot and then ambient you know, so creating room tone is actually very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what you're talking about. The inverse 100%. square law, right? Like yeah. that's, it's tough. That's why there's that for anybody who's like newer and listening to this, like that's why they have powerful lights. That's why there's M90s sitting on, you know, cranes, cranes. from yeah. far away. 
We're trying the best we can to emulate sunlight and what we true. naturally see. And you know, the moon is like the largest soft, uh, largest reflector in the world. Yeah, yeah. It's a reflector. Yeah. It's reflecting the it's sun. It's a giant That's reflector. All it is. Exactly. It's just yeah. reflecting the sun. And why is it blue? Because the 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 surface of the moon has like a grayish bluish tone. Yeah. And then it's also going through all of the levels of, of the sky. Yeah. yeah. And and what, what's being reflected, which is actually the water being yeah. reflected back into yeah, the sun. Yeah. So we're talking science here. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> crazy to think but that's about how you, that's, and, and and blue and blue light, if everyone keeps thinking moonlight's like super, super hard blue, it's like actually it's it's not as blue as you think it's it like is. It's like more silver. It's right? a silverish yeah, blue. It's like yeah, a silver's blue. it's it's it realms between like forty five hundred five thousand. But I think roughly. it's because we perceive moonlight in blue. That yes. that they yeah. if you emphasize blue, our brains think blue. Moonlight. Yeah, yeah. it's moonlight. For and, sure. And, and so it's part of that sure. game too. And it's almost like orange is like, oh, candles. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you're a big bounce light guy. Is there I any other bounce. tools that you uh you know any go to tools that you enjoy? Um, you know, lately I've I've been loving the puck light stuff and I was talking about how I love the you're new ro- about the, that. Roscoe. the Roscoe. The Roscoe is right. I'm a huge fan. Huge fan. Yeah. I only recently jumped into the Roscoe game well, actually probably like half a year ago. Yeah. Um they had a deal with the getting the dot. If you guys are familiar, yeah. you get the like the Roscoe light and you get the dot piece on there. And that's been lots of fun. Hmm. Uh, to use that on I use it on site a lot actually for uh eye lights. Yeah. yeah. From, from oh yeah, yeah. It's use a big like huge, circle. Yeah. Yeah, because cool. if we have this huge like bounce light in you, then it kinda like takes all this darkness then your eyes just have darkness like ooh they look like a demon yeah. so like, let me just, I'm just bringing this light over here real quick and then it's just like it just brings in that little eye light kicks yeah. in yeah. right so that's been really neat cool. um, I've used it where we needed a little bit of a of a, of a hair light mm-hmm. and we would just like put a piece of metal on top because it has a you can get a magnet for it Oh, so oh it cool! It actually comes with a magnet in the kit. Oh, hmm. that's cool. Yeah, and yeah. it comes with a little, little, sp- a little, little rotating um, head as well, so you can actually magnetize it and move it around. Oh, that's nice. nice. So it's not just like flat one way or flat the other way. Yeah. Oh, so it, it pivots kind it of. It pivots. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I love that light. It's it's awesome. Yeah. Um, and I use that actually way more than the Aperture one because of also its uh, technology of its connection. So mm. Dash makes two. Roscoe makes two versions mm-hmm. of their Dash of their little puck light. Uh, they have a version that's non CRMX, which is a DMX control board yeah. kind of re- re- um, setup, and they have one that's uh, that is fully control board. The non control board has an app like every other LED light that's out there. Right. Aperture's really good at theirs. Nanlet has one, and so on. The one thing I like about the Roscoe one, it actually stays connected very easily, and it stays connected whether or not you go in and out of the app. Really? And it stays. That's connected. That's probably the first then. No, it's, I, it's, I've never had an app that I've had ProLight, Nanlite, Sidus Link. Yeah, you, um, you leave it. Astera. You come back. You see this little green bar. It was like, come on, green bar, come on, green bar. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, Roscoe doesn't have that. Roscoe doesn't have that. No, that's amazing. No, I'll have to bring it to you guys next. Honestly, time. Actually, that yeah, is like, do a demo. Yeah, I, I should. That's one of the most annoying things in the world. One hundred. Especially since everything's run from apps. You're like, all right, yeah, let me switch this tight. Yeah, give me a second. I just gotta get outside of Slink. Yes. And yeah. you're sitting there like, yeah. come on, connect, and you're like, oh my god. Yeah, yeah. The Titan tubes are great, but they also yeah. have the same problem. They have the same problem. Yeah. Yeah, but Roscoe doesn't. That's amazing. Roscoe I doesn't. really got to check this they're out. One of, they're one of the first ones. I'm like, okay, I love this. Guaranteed, come Monday, it's Friday right now, <laughs> doorstep, he's going to have these lights. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> Remember the first time he bought the, uh, the Titan tubes? Yeah. yeah. We were talking about them. Yeah. And he's like, bro, I guess I went by his house. He's like, take a look at this. <laughs> pulls, up, pulls up the Pelican. I'm like... It's like twelve grand. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. My nice. favorite lights of all time. <laughs> yeah. I love. They are amazing. My favorite. Things they are. The they're great for yeah, sure. Yeah, that, I'm favorite. waiting for them to make an update because everyone else is starting to mm. pass them slowly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I the, know. the new aperture. A lot of technology bars, coming out. The aperture out. one is really, really well done. Yeah. Yeah. I the, I, but the infinity bars you're talking about. Yeah. The infinity. But bars. actually, even their 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 twelve footer, their twelve footer has more um, LED pixel mapping. It does. Than, than this does. With a lot but more density. Not not to defend a stereo, not to be an stereo boy, because I have a lot of aperture <laughs> yeah, stuff. Yeah. I use I love, I love I love I love aperture. <laughs> yeah. But here's the difference. Yeah. These guys have been th- they can go through war. One hundred percent. I don't know that the infinity bars can, and I've heard that they overheat. I'm sorry, aperture. I love you guys, but like they do. it. I heard they overheat. Yeah. I don't know if that's true, and it they're does. not water resistant or waterproof at all. Mm-hmm. So a stereo still has something. No, I I and love these. I love, I, use them I love these guys. I mean, yeah. I, I love Aperture, obviously. I like yeah. I, if I had Infinity yeah. Bars and you gave it to me, I'll take them. For sure. But like, <laughs> sure. but don't get me wrong. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah. Ap- Aperture lately, I think now they're playing a catch-up game a little bit. Yeah. Nothing against them. Again, they've done a really good job of bringing you yeah. know merging that gap between Very like well, yeah. really high quality guys 100%. and like oh crap, we can never do stuff like they do. Yeah. And and they've they've done it. And it's great. Um, but they're starting to get into the copy game because, again, th- we were laughing because I was showing this Roscoe to a bunch of people, right? Yeah. Like, this is so freaking awesome. Let me show it to you. Yeah. And then when the when the new MC Pro came out, they're like, oh, yeah. that is a copy 
to no joke. Yeah. Like, just trying to catch up in a way. It's a, it's a little bit of a catch up. Yeah. Now. It's a little bit of a catch up. So it's like Windows and Apple going at it. Yeah. And then they did the catch up back and forth. Like there was one point Windows was like flying past yep. Apple when, yeah. when Steve passed. I remember that. Yeah. And now they're kind of like they're reversing again. Yeah. Yeah. Like Apple's coming back up. But uh, yeah, and I feel like they, Astera, but Astera, I mean, they're tried and true. It's almost like an airy camera. They're trying to do it. Exactly. And I think reliability, I'd rather show up on set and know that it works. Yeah. You know, I've had some aperture lights, like, just literally just die on me Mm -hmm. on set. Mm -hmm. And that's happened before. And, you know, um, hopefully it doesn't happen to these newer products, but it's happened to, like, a little bit of the older line. Right. A little bit. But, you know, that was before they were getting any kind of respect in the industry. Now they're actually show up on set. So, you know, we'll give them the the credit where credit's due. For sure. But, you know, uh, you got so many different, competitors now coming out mm-hmm. nanlite's killing it right uh pro light yeah, is, is another one sneaky. uh kelvin just came out you hear about kelvin mm-hmm. you heard about them like they're mm-hmm. coming out they're new cream source is a big one too. cream source exactly mm-hmm. vortex 8 pretty much is taking over sky panels at this yeah. point which is yeah. who thought anyone could take over sky panels i was kind of sad because i was really rooting <laughs> for uh rotolite yeah oh yeah rotolite yeah rotolite came Roto with, was the, with the, they had a t- titan two by one Mm. That was gonna that like, was gonna kill the sky panel like the sky panel sixty yeah um, before Aperture came out with their three hundred or six hundred yeah one. and um, Rotolite had a Titan X it was a two by one mm-hmm. a Titan X two I think is what they call it some big big old um, panel system and what sold me on their system it was two times brighter than the sky panel and mm-hmm. you had a control box that you can put any camera into it and it'll actually match the what the camera said so like okay you're shooting on a Sony, I'm going to put this mapping on it. Mm-hmm. And now it'll only show off lights that it won't overblow the light. Yeah. Like the camera, the camera sensor won't be like, oh, I'm, I'm overblowing the reds or the greens oh, or wow. whatever. So it actually understood that. There's like a mapping mm. system, wow. which the Roscoe also has. The Roscoe, I know, I'm going to keep going back. <laughs> Roscoe, I love yeah, this thing. Roscoe, yeah. I love this thing. Oh man, where's my phone? Gonna, okay, I, I, don't have, I don't have the freaking thing. Yeah, I'll have to show it to you guys later. Okay. Well, yeah, oops. Take it. That's okay. It's all right. This is water. This is water. But the whole now, thing falls over. <laughs> <laughs> Roscoe <laughs> start falling yeah. in the ground and everything. Yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, in, inside the app, you can actually tell it to go like Rec 709 or Rec 2020. It can actually stay within oh, a certain wow. realm. Interesting. Which is very cool. And then Roscoe's are the gel kings, yeah. yes. right? And there's a, there's a couple of guys I've listened to podcasts, a bunch of a bunch of gaffer podcasts. I love listening to podcasts of other people yeah. in the industry, just kind of hear how they're doing, especially the guys above us, right? Yeah. Or had better opportunities, I'll put it that way. They're not above us. They're just better opportunistic. Further along. They, Further along in their career. Opportunistic. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, though. It's a luck, yeah, yeah. It's a luck game, it's, honestly. There's a lot of bad, too, yes. You know, I, I look at it as a luck game because I think of Kenny G. Mm. Kenny G is like one of the most famous saxophone players in the world, okay? Yeah. But he's not the best. And there's tons of saxophone players that are great. I used to play music saxophone in Louisiana when I was mm. younger, when I wanted to try to be a musician. That was a long time ago. Um, <laughs> yeah, I played sax. So, uh, I can see that. yeah, I play, I don't know. That's, anyways, um, yeah, so Kenny G, yeah. he, he just went to one concert at the right time with the right sponsors looking for someone to play in that, that, that mm. world mm-hmm. for pop music with the instrumental. Mm-hmm. And he got picked up. Hmm. But there's a lot of guys that turned it down. They're like, no, I don't want to. I don't want to go that route. Yeah. You know, it's almost like saying, I'm gonna craft brewery. brewery. I'm gonna sell it to Heineken now. Go global, but I'm gonna right. stay a craft. But no, you're no longer. You're no yeah. longer a craft beer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. these guys stayed. No, I'll, I'll stick to my locals and say craft in the locals. Yeah. So Kenny G is like, well, I'm gonna try this out. Go to this thing concert. Pff, blew up. Mm. Uh, mm. You know, I, I still enjoy the music. I mean, it's still really cool. But I mean, you know, it's that that's the mindset. Yeah. yeah. Right. So. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. For sure. But so you're a big Roscoe guy. So I'm assuming. <laughs> <laughs> recently, recently. Okay. I, I, props to them doing a really good job at their app. That was the one thing that sold me. So until Aperture and Nanlite and even Astera yeah. fixes their apps to not, not unlink too fast on their products. Yeah. I'm 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 hanging on the Roscoe Hangout right yeah. now. Interesting. Because you know, those guys, their apps doing really well. There's not a whole lot on the app though. I will yeah. say the the controllability on it, you don't have a lot of effects. Right. But Roscoe again, since they are the gel masters, they have all their gels in there. So if you're like, right. oh, I need this X gel on the on the big sets, they're always like, I need number, you know, two four oh, I need, to, you know, they, they're throwing numbers left and right. Like, yeah, right. yeah, they got like a swatch book in their head. That's yeah. it. That's, yeah. it. That's, That's it. And so cool. Roscoe has their swatch book in their in their app. In their so app. Like, right. There you go. There it is. Interesting. So it's pretty neat. No, I love the Asteras. You were talking about Asteras. Yeah. Um, the one thing I don't like about them is a very hard app to learn if you're not used to it. Yes. <laughs> yes. You will hate that app when you first open it. One hundred. It is one of the most like. Doesn't the, make sense. It doesn't make sense. Like the when Sony's first came out mirrorless and, and the A7S2 and the menu and everyone's so many <sighs> menus. It's like a stare. It's like, what do I just want this thing to fade out and then you can't make a fade? You're like, it's not that easy. 
<laughs> you're creating you gotta groups. Go here, then another well, there's menu. three different groups, and then oh. I gotta like find it. And it's well, like oh, making my. a group is even hard. Making a group still, yeah, it is super hard. We uh, we when we did that shoot um <laughs> a couple of, um, a few weeks ago, uh, like uh, we had different different people running them each yeah. week, which I thought was really well. Our gaffers change up because we're only busy and people have schedules. Yeah, and um, so we got them in, and each one were like, crap gotta do this and they'll spend like 30 minutes to an hour like oh, yeah hold on yes and then we'd be going to youtube yeah and then come back to oh, it wow. like it didn't work as well let me go back to youtube <laughs> and then i just gotta go back and forth and i'd come over <laughs> to the show like hey, did you get that thing to fade yet <laughs> yeah, I know. it's that's crazy yeah. it actually is yeah. that's that's their biggest weakness 100 yeah. percent. it was funny because we had we had like two three floors and they were we had set them up as like practicals yeah so, you know different levels of floors and we're like okay this floor has to be 5600 this floor has to be 3200 and you just see them sweat like crap <laughs> give, me, give me a second to come back to that yeah and and, and that, then it got to the point like we get a text from like set deck hey the color's changing it's like don't worry about it it's working in the scene we're in <laughs> we're gonna, don't worry about the other one right now yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a really gaffer like i think is this one <laughs> it's that's like classic. sliding a bunch of stuff over yeah, yeah the, the, like it's like powered power like like party time coloring on yeah, one yeah. floor but yeah. the floor with all the cameras are at is correct it's like no no don't who cares oh, about man. the other ones <laughs> the, in, yeah, okay it's gotten better yes. right but when it like a year ago i'd say like the app for me was mm. so screwed up that like sometimes you set up groups and then it would mix and match the lights oh so like if you put two light in the same light in two or three different groups like sometimes it'll accidentally mix it up and then you'll be changing it without knowing and i you know how many times i sat there i said edit tile delete all and start all over again <laughs> i was like i can't i can't with this i can't figure yeah. this out right now yeah, it, it's funny, and it's 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 crazy. I actually haven't bought new tubes in a while. I bought the Nanlite tubes when they first came out. It was the, like the Pava 30s. tubes, the Pava tubes. Yeah, the yeah. first version. The first version. First okay. version, and uh, and they at that, that time they actually had a wireless box, kind of like how Astera has a little yeah. box that you have to put yeah. on you yeah, yeah. for them. And so I bought the box. I still use that thing. Oh really? I do. I'm like oh, cool. I, I'm always using it. Like you know, I just need need to highlight that one hallway. Just stick one of my my you know Pava tubes, and they're like, well, how are we gonna put up there? Just gaff tape it. Who cares? Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. It's exactly. cheap. I don't care anymore. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But it's like just <laughs> just plug in just plug in this box in the corner. I was like, what's the box for? It controls the light. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and the app on that stupid horrible it was horrible. Worst. App. But all I needed it to do was just go go to color like color <clears> temperature <throat> and fade up, fade down. I don't care about the rest of it. Yeah. And it didn't yeah. bother me. And I was yeah. like, yeah. So I use them all the time. Like, I just need, we need an extra light in the corner. I was like, we're out of lights. I got my Pavo tubes in the car. Just throw them up. The only thing I hate about Pavo tubes is, is, is the control on the light itself. Oh, it's horrible. They don't make sense no. whatsoever. No. That's that's and one of the biggest. The Pavo tubes, of, I, I wanted to try their new X Pavo tubes. I've tried But them, I've yeah. heard a lot of people having issues with them. Yeah. yeah. And I said, no, oh, that's too bad. Yeah. They, they look quality solid. They look pretty solid. Because when the first Pavo tube came out, it was like a game changer. Like, yeah. the quality was good on it, a good output, mm -hmm. had its quirks, but. It was cheap. It's cheap. Yeah. Yeah. It cheap. wasn't a thousand dollar tube. No. Right. So like it could just like people can buy them, and then they came up part two, and it was like a little bit better. But mm -hmm. I, the menu system drove me crazy on those right. guys. The app would not work, and it just like, unfortunately. It's very true. You know, it's very true. I'm I'm debating even even buying the Aperture ones. I think I'm gonna just throw some money on an Astera and be like, I'll wait. But I I'm really hoping they make a version two. Honestly. Yeah, I I've heard they haven't. I kind of hope they don't, just for my own pride. <laughs> <laughs> right. I look at these I'm like I don't want to replace you guys <laughs> I love well, you I guys replace my, I, I kept my Pava tubes and I haven't, yeah, just, haven't got rid of them now, now they yeah. have more friends you have more friends yeah, that's yeah. it we'll buy that's you it. another friend you got new yeah. friends yeah, exactly. yeah I mean because I still have my Source 4 right, I have my right, Jolico yeah, but yeah, I still yeah. use my I was like hey I need, I need a warmer light like well let me just bring my old Source 4 and just stick it back inside the thing and shoot off again you know Yeah, yeah. so old lights never they, they, they never go away yeah, especially you know. tried and true lights. Tried and 100%. True. Yeah, the tried and true lights. Well, even if they're not tried and true, but like, could I need something to flicker in the corner? Like, this light will flicker all day. <laughs> yeah. it'll, it'll work. It'll work. You find a position for the light. That's so yeah, You know, yeah. back in the day, I, I got when LEDs were first coming out, I actually got into ICANN. Have you guys remember ICANN? Oh, yeah. ICANN, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. They were like one of the budget brands for a bit. They were super budget. Yeah. They had a ton of like little lights. They had the ICANN uh, LED one. It's a single LED light it was super bright okay it did not dim it on off oh and really? you, and you had a choice between 5600 and 3200 and i bought like 12 of them oh. for a shoot wow. and i did them in i think i did a music video years ago and we just like stuck them in the corner and just like and we, we just had the guys go on off on off on off just to kind of make a flicker <laughs> that's <laughs> hilarious <laughs> wow yeah, we, i think we put like like six on on a, on a strip panel and we put the other six on another strip panel just on off the strip panel yeah and, like, hey. and so we told our lighting guys like hey just follow the beat he goes okay 
<laughs> just do that all day. <laughs> but it, they foot. worked. They yeah, worked. How long it works? They worked. The same thing, I still right? use them for just like backlight. You still have them. I still have them. Oh, wow. I still have them. I still have them. I use them whenever I'm like, I'm doing like, if I get lenses to test, I was like, well, I'm trying to see how good the flare is. Or what does the flare test? Yes. Because they're super, they're so focused. Okay. They're they're horrible. Are they like mini pot lights in a way? Like it's a circle and you just like. Yeah, it's just a circle. It's like, it is. It's it's a portable pot light. That's 100% what it is. Interesting. It's a portable pot light. It weighs nothing. Yeah. You can stick it anywhere and it'll just like blast like this beam of light. That's pretty cool. I can think of ideas with that. That's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. So now maybe we are looking to some older lights and see what uh, like. I don't know. Yeah, you can probably get like, those for maybe like a dollar each. They're now. in a box somewhere in someone's garage. You know, they're you sitting. Know. Yeah, there's. There, I yeah. think I saw them on eBay for a dollar. For a dollar. A dollar. What? That's, but it's if you if you can think of new ways to. I mean, like technology is always being used in some way. Lenses, of course, are one of the big ones right now. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's yeah. trying to go for the vintage look. Yeah. I was just gonna say, but talk about lenses. Yeah, we were yeah. talking about lenses last time. You yeah. and I were talking yeah. about right. Yeah. And so, like, a Canon K lenses are are the big ones, yeah. and they were really cheap years ago, and now they're back to being super expensive. Yeah, I know. It's like, okay, what just happened? Yeah. And so, and I feel like lighting technology is kind of the same way. You mm. know, like mm. people are getting rid of HMIs and they're selling them for cheap right now, and I love it. Yeah. So I'm like, I love HMI. Yeah, I swear, M18, I'm a huge you know, HMI. Pair of M18s was three, M18s. Uh, three grand or something like yeah. that. Those that was ridiculous. Stupid. Yeah, was I've been stupid. I've been buying a lot of HMI lights recently. Yeah, I, they're they they take up a lot of power. They're very hot. Yeah, very hot. But I love the output of them. I love how they they light faces. I love how they come through windows. Different I love look. how they bounce. Yeah. yeah. Um, they have a very different look than yeah. LED. Uh, LEDs obviously have their place, and they're doing really great, and you yeah. can control like yeah. crazy. Yeah. But if you see this beautiful, powerful source to come in, LED is almost it feels electronic. It's it's, it's a weird yeah. feel. Like it's hard. It's very nuanced. A lot of people don't know the freaking difference. It's, you know, like, what it's, are you it's, about? it's like people do st- like, like I, I steady cam, right? So yeah. it's like there's sort of yes. steady cam operators and then there's, there's a uh, gimbal operators. Yes. And then there's mm. that, that's also that's the slight like, difference. That that's a motion thing. Yeah. I actually steady cammed uh, last weekend, actually. Oh, nice. we, did, we did a project and um, I was talking to the director and he goes, Hey, I want to, I want the camera to kind of like smoothly go through. I want it to be organic. I don't mind a little bit of shakiness. I was like, well, I don't want to handheld this. And I was like, and he says, I don't want those Ronin things. It's too, too perfect. And mm-hmm. I was like, that's kind of cool that you, you're saying that. And I was Just like, well, I've got a steady it. that I haven't done a whole lot on. Yeah. So I'm not like the perfect at steady, but I can get it fairly steady with a little bit of wobble here and there. Yeah, but yeah. it's organically wobbled. And he goes, game. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And wow, I was like, cool. all right. Sorry. And plus, we, we were also using like an airy package with like a quick lens. It was too heavy for a gimbal anyways. Yeah, yeah. By the time I looked, I was like, okay, that thing's too heavy anyways. It's got like the battery pack and everything on it. And yeah. Yeah, so we did that, but no, it was a lot of fun. I mean, you kind of did this like fallback, and it's actually on my Instagram. I have to show you. I think I saw yeah. that you posted it. Like, the, you yeah, posted I had the to. Build. It was just yeah. so much fun. I, I posted wow. on the steady cam page. Like, I don't steady cam that often. I usually DP, but here's something I did recently. And everyone went, nuts. like, this is so cool. I like steady cam. Like, somebody seen someone breaked up in steady cam is like seeing like Robocop, you know, it's like <laughs> Terminator. Like, yo, yeah. that's sick. You it know, like, it's like, like, fun, that's though. Sick. Yeah. I remember when you were first, you were first building yours. You were like, you like, you made, like, it was like a Frankenstein glide it cam. It was uh, pretty crazy. Uh, that thing fell apart quick oh yeah okay yeah so i okay i yeah when i got into steady camming it was oh, four years ago oh, okay four five three four years ago whatever and um because i used to be a running guy mm-hmm. right and my run do you remember my running that that was the last time i got used is that the m or the original it was original it was original run yeah, run and one. one wow and it like classic died yeah and i was like okay i'm getting tired of this yeah. and then i started getting into more projects where they're like hey can we rent an airy can we yeah. rent a red it's like yeah i don't own that crap but I'd, yeah. I'd love to but i mean like, sure i'll rent it and big expensive gear and yeah, yeah. like oh and then i started getting into more narrative you started like, can we add the motors for the follow focus person mm-hmm. can we put the wireless on there it's like okay this thing is getting heavy mm-hmm. even like a canon c500 or the fx9 or fs7 at the time um any of those cameras even your fs5 it can get heavy when you start adding this stuff once to you it. rig it up mat yeah. boxes yeah. you name it right yeah, yeah and so the ronins they became more and more i mean i know people are really good at doing it really fast but it got to the point where it, it's really hard to put everything and balance that out yeah um the one yeah. thing i like about steadicam if you build it correctly, and I've done it before, you can build it up or like, okay, set a cam up, let's shoot, put it down, slide it off, onto the shoulder, let's go. Yeah. Yep, exactly. And then you're going to yeah. come back, yeah. you have your markers, put it, slide it back on, marker it, a yes. couple of bouncing, off you go. Yeah. Like, it, it's Fast. quick if you can, if you if you build it correctly. Yeah. Right? And yeah. I, I did that on a couple of shoots recently. I was like, yeah, it's like, I we had, their budget only covered, like, myself, camera operators, everything like that, mm-hmm. but none of my camera ops, the um, steady cam, and I was like, I'll set a cam. <laughs> so I was like, cool, I get to operate again. So yeah, like, that's fun. So then I pulled it back. It's like, okay, we got this. And the director was like, that's going to take like 35 minutes to balance. I was like, no, no, we're going to balance it in the morning. We'll take it off. It's already marked. When, they, when, they, when they're when they done shooting, we're just going to slide it on. Five minutes later, let's go. 
and we wow. fly. And that wow. was it. And that's how we did it too. Yeah, we, that's we, awesome. I think it took us like five minutes and we were waiting for, as I say, you know, hurry up and wait. Yeah, yeah. We were waiting for set deck and makeup to finish their thing. There you go. And yeah. I was like, oh, no worries. And that's always the Camera's best thing good. as a DP. You're not yeah. the one that everyone's waiting on. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a good It's feeling. happened where I've, I've, I've been the one they've waited on. But that's it's the, natural. Yeah, it's going to happen, is. you know, it but, is. uh, yeah. Is, no, steady camming is fun. I, I, for a while, I almost thought about because I was having a hard time trying to find my pathway lane mm-hmm. into going to DP. I was like, all right, I'll go steady cam because one person did talk to me about it and said, hey, you should go this route. And it's that's why I spent career, yeah. spent a lot of money on the steady cam I, 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 I currently have. It's, oh, wow. okay. it's, it's, a, it's, it can handle like up to like 80 pounds nice. now, so it can handle quite a bit. Yeah, I love it too. And it's, it's an older model, bought it from an, from an IOT steady cam up here in, here in the city. Um, Chris, Chris is a really cool guy. Uh-huh. And uh, he has a studio, um, make the films. And anyways, he um, was like, hey, man, I'm selling my Steadicam. I was like, game. Yeah. I'll come by. <laughs> That's Came by. He let me try it on, check it. I was like, oh, nice. okay. This, it felt it totally different right. from that glide cam thing. I, I, I tried the glide cam world. And I was like, okay, this thing, old, beat up. You know, I got <laughs> it for cheap just to see if I liked it. Yeah, you were yeah. testing in your house. I saw it. I was like, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't bad. You know, you, you, made the, you literally made the most out of that. Like, I, I did. Like. I did. It, it paid itself off in like a shoot. Yeah, it was yeah. so cheap. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. I was like, yeah. look, I'm, I don't set it come often. I'll do it for you cheap. And then I did it. Of course, if I ever say that to set it come up, I'll look and be like, why don't you do that? Yeah. <laughs> you know, but yeah. no, but I moved to this bigger one. It's a lot of fun. I, I do, enjoy doing it. And I'm, lately I've been running into using Airy cameras and mm-hmm. all their cool lenses. And we did a package extra from Keslo. And they were like, hey, do you need a tripod stuff? It's like, no, actually, we're study camming it. And he goes, oh, cool. And so they gave us what we needed for the package and walked nice. us through it. And nice. Yeah, and it's fun. It's fun. Yeah. I love that community. And it's fun to chat to those guys. They they love to talk tech. Yeah, Seneca game guys. You yeah, know? and they're very fit. You have yeah. to be. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. it's well, very physical. Well, there's a physical. few guys that are a little bit on the. Oh really? I figured it's a, a very guys. physical job. Like you know. It is. It is. You sweat for yeah. sure. I was gonna say yeah. For yeah. sure, you sweat. Um, <laughs> I kind of like it. Yeah. You know, maybe that's why I look good. I don't. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I've been putting that that body body armor on every once in a while. Yeah. Um, because I, I did do it like a few times in the past like couple months, so it was fun though. Because even easy rig is tough. You know, like oh, after a few, like you're you just, you get tired, man. You For sure. Sweat and it's For like, sure. I, you know, I've gotten to the point I stopped, I stopped doing the easy rig game. I, I went back to shoulder. Oh, your shoulder rig. Game. I love shoulders. Yeah. I'm like, man, that feels so good. I actually bought a, uh, a padded shoulder rig from Panavision mm-hmm. and it raises it up. They have a thing called an ergo rig. I don't know mm-hmm. if you've heard of those. I've heard yeah, of it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that's a body and I've been wanting to buy one of those, but I was like, well, let me just try that if I liked shoulder rig. And for the past um, year, I've been like, oh shoot, shoulder rig, let's go. And then nice. I get to get the handles. I kind of set it up a certain way. Yeah. Um, I watched a, a DP, Shane Halbert, I think yep. is his last yeah, name. Yeah. Um, one, one of his classes was talking about like, he, he loves to grab the mat box and run around. It's like, yes. oh, that's a smart idea. And yeah. so I bought a high-end mat. I bought the wooden camera UMB1, mm-hmm. which is kind of like a copy of the Airy version. Yeah. And I don't do clip-ons. I actually do the slide-on so I can clip onto uh, the 50 mils. Mm-hmm. Slide it on, grab on. So that way you can, if you shake it, it's never going to fall off. Yeah. You, have to, you have to really rip it at it. Yeah. Like, so I, I've been lately, if I if I handheld, I go this way. If I get closer to a character, I'll just jump onto the mat box and fly in. As nice. if I'm grabbing their head like, come yeah. in here, you know? Yeah, wow. yeah. And yeah. and it's fun. Yeah. It's fun. It's a really cool way to bring the audience because that's who you're that's who you're pulling in. Yeah. Your eye is the audience's eye, right? It's you're like, POV hey, I want to pull this audience yeah, in here and like, like level your eyes. Them in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes, you know, we're talking about like having to operate <clears throat> and not operate DPs. Mm-hmm. And there's a scene like, okay, I want to operate this one. And like, I'll have my, my cam up, like, sit back for a second. I, just, I really want to get into this scrap. I'll just yeah. I can't really fly in there because it's so much fun to like really feel that that connection to, yeah. the, to the actor. Um, especially if you have a good relationship with the actor, so we have a little, even even extra fun. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Which which sells really well on 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 TV, right? Yeah. So yeah, for sure. Um, and it's fun doing that stuff. So yeah. Man, wow, we covered a lot today. We can keep, <laughs> we can keep going. 100%. I can keep going. I'm, I am a person that you can want to talk, talk about forever. lenses for another three hours. Let's no. go. Let's go. Let's go. No. <laughs> That'll be another whole other thing right yeah, there. Because yeah. uh, I, I know you just mentioned the Canon K's and everything like that. And I'm just like. Oh. Like the, the vintage stuff. look and everything yep. like that that you're talking about. What do you find? Fun? Well, let, let's just yeah, just let's jump in that a little bit. Now we're restarting. We're restarting. It's like, it's, like, it's like you put something in the oven, right? I'm sorry. Now you're just I, know you, it. I know you two are like editing this. I am really sorry that the two of you have to edit through all this footage and be like, oh my god, we talk forever. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. The tech nerds will love. Where's this. the marker, Mark? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Favorite like some of the favorite lenses you've been testing out or like something you want to try. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I bought those Mike lenses. Remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, so I bought the whole set. I got the whole set finally. I made a deal with Mike. I'm not going to talk about how much oh. I got from them because they don't want me to. But um, I'll be <laughs> considerate. I'm not going to tell what, what I got from Mike's. But I, they
it's like Nanlite versus Aperture. It's like not a lot mm. of people use Nanlite stuff. There's yeah. more Aperture. And yeah, right. more people use DZOs because the market is they just market themselves better. Yeah. Mickey has a really cool look. Um, the housing on both the vest bids and the Mikes are on the same level. Yeah. I've had to take my Mikes into a lens repair place a couple of times. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. But I'm also beating the crap out of them. Like yeah, I'm yeah, letting, right. they're often on set They're you know, I'm getting different people to, I have different second ACs putting on my, my lenses for me and they're, yeah. you know, they're putting it on there like, like they do with high end lenses, but even high end lenses get beat up. Yeah. Right. And they have to go into repairs. Yeah. Um, recent, recent set that I actually really, really love that I've tried out the Supreme Primes by Zeiss. Okay. Yeah. It's, oh, okay, it's cool. an Air, it's an Airy brand now, I think. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So it's Airy's Supreme Prime yes. Zeiss. Whatever. Yeah. 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 I, I used the cooks for a project recently, um, because the director wanted to have that like filmic, like older look to mm-hmm. it. And I was like, well, let's go, let's go cooks. So I do try to, I'm starting to get into the mindset of like, okay, what does these lenses do? Yeah. And what, what do I get? What out characters? Of it? What yeah. kind of characters do you get? What yeah. kind of flares do you get? Mm-hmm. What kind of like color rendering it gives you, mm-hmm. you know? And I even started doing a test where I've taken the camera, the lenses and I've, I've borrowed, like I borrowed the Atlas Orion's, the, the their nice. anamorphics. Yeah. Yeah. I said, let me see. So I got my FS100 out one time. I put it on that. I borrowed a friend's C200, their yeah. Canon. I had yeah. my FX9. I had a friend bring his Black Magic. We put them all on there. Nice. We sat there. We put a color chart in front of it. The one thing I don't like that a lot of YouTubers do is they just like, let, 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 let. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this camera sucks. This camera sucks. This camera sucks. Like, I want to know if that's actually true. Yeah, and yeah. so I had a friend who was a, <clears throat> his a DIT, a DIT, you know, colors for those yeah. of you who are not familiar. And, um, a digital imaging technician, I'll put it out yeah. with DIT. But yeah. uh, so uh, we we put all these cameras together. We put the color chart in front of him. He had done it all. We couldn't tell. It was really? beautiful. But wow. And then we were That's like, crazy. then we really got to see the characteristic of the lens on all of them. Yes. Do the same thing. So it's like, okay, 100% it's about the lens. And someone, I met a cinematographer who's on some major, I'm not going to call him out because he probably doesn't want me to. Yeah. Um, he's on some major shows. He's on IATSE, D- DP. And him and I were talking. He says, you know, Ray, it's not about that. You can take any camera in the past like six years. If you put the right lensing in front of it, you get the right team who can color it. You can't tell. It's the colorist. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. 100%. And if you and for me, I've learned if you can respect the gear. Yes. So if you know the gear has, you know, they talk about stops. Yeah, yeah. Twelve yes. stops. This fifteen stops. Like the new Airy thirty five is like yeah. seventeen stops or whatever. The, yeah. If you can respect the stops of any camera. Yes, you're right. And you light it within the stop range. You and can make you know any how the color works with, when you must try to massage 100%. it. One hundred percent. Yeah. That's exactly. It. That's it. So you're like, yeah. okay, well, this has a low stop. We're like, cool. Brighten the crap out of the talent. Match the background. Yeah. And it, it, you'll be in yeah. the range of the stops of that camera. Yeah. That's got a high stop. No worries. Put the kid with the talent in darkness. It's fine. They'll come back. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, Which is what I found with like Ari. What I love about Ari. Yeah. When I first start coloring Ari, I start to realize just how easy it was. Oh yeah. Compared to everything <laughs> else, like so uh, I'm not dissing. I know so many Sony, Sony fanboys. They are. There's so many Sony fanboys, but I'm sorry that it's the one of the hardest colors, like one of the hardest color sciences to to mess with. For sure. For it's sure. very difficult. I think Canon is okay. Mm-hmm. It, it's I'm battling quite a bit still mm-hmm. in Canon. Same Black Magic is pretty good, but Ari just like you put it in and it's just like oh my god, it's like butter. I will I will have you test the Confinity, the new ones. Confinity, really? Oh my god. I gosh. never even considered okay. them. So the new Kin Infinity, I know we're, we're getting back to tech talking. Here. Yeah. The new Kin Infinity, I finally got to test their new Mavo 6K. Oh, okay. Holy crap. Really? It's the color range, they, they don't have the same depth, um, you know, like the 12 stop, all that kind of, they don't have yeah. the 14 stops that the Airy Mini has. Yeah. If you're going to compare it to that, but the color science is the same. No way. We uh, really? we did a test where we put one of the Airy LUTs from Airy C-Log yeah. onto Kin Infinity's log, their K- K-Log, I think okay. is what they call it. Yeah. Could, they... they there's people on YouTube. You can look it up. Mm. People on YouTube pointed it out. They're like, "We're surprised." It it was a it was impressive. That's cool. That's but I'm, but I'm also sad that they're not a huge the the North American market is not their market. Yeah, they're they're a, they're a Chinese market. Yeah, brand. they're and not a Chinese really big here. There. Yeah, they're not, and they yeah. they need the support. I feel like they should lower the price of the cameras. They're expensive for what they How are. How much is the six K? The six K is like sixteen thou. Okay, wow. so that's pretty they're, expensive they're, they're, for a not. Yeah, a, they're playing in a big boy. They're playing a big boy bit, realm. Yeah. Okay. They are coming up with a new one that's cheaper. Yeah, but so the the one that comes out, and I, I'm, I've been debating on it. It's like I'm gonna sell my FX9 because I'm like I think really? I'm gonna grab it, but I don't wow. know. It is wow. it's crazy. Like I keep I keep debating on it because I really want an Aerie, yeah. but it's like I don't want I don't have eighty thousand dollars. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, at least. You, you have a house, you have a house in Burlington. I have a house in Burlington. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. I just bought a house. But yeah. like yeah, so like for for fifteen to sixteen grand, you get a camera that does four 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 ProRes, mm. right? You get the full range. You get a twelve bit four 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 signal, which is mm. amazing. And then you can have the ability where if you take an airy LUT and put it on there, and it look it looks almost identical. Skin tones and, and everything. You're like, yeah, you're like okay. 
this is this is nuts. You can have wow. a an airy play world in a cheaper brand. Yeah. Th- there are I feel like there's something we're missing, but I haven't seen enough people talk about what's missing. Like a lot of people who've tried the new one, you can look at every YouTuber. I mean, from like Potato Jet, to, yeah, yeah. You know, Gerald Undone, all those guys, and yet anyone else who's just like trying to just type it in YouTube. Not a single person has anything bad to say about that camera. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. We're and then trying. I, yeah, then Cinetech's here. They'll let you play with it for a day. Oh, really? So if you give them a call, I'll be like, hey, can I play? So you guys should do that. Yeah. Yeah. Do it, do I'm, I'm curious. Yeah. I didn't know really that. cool. That's surprising to me. Yeah. Give them a call. They're really actually really cool because they know that they don't have a they don't have an audience. Yeah. And they're like, look, we'll let you play with it for a day. Go take it out. They 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 nice. let us they let us play with it for like eight hours. They're like, hey, you take it out. Wow. Cool. Wow. We just take it out. What? Ran outside. You know, like I could run away with this thing. <laughs> That's yeah. cool. Yeah, I mean they wow. put your name down, but I mean, <laughs> yeah, 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 of course, yeah, yeah. I imagine yeah, for but, sure. But to go back to lenses, so I guess that makes sense. Like I guess at the end of the day, like mm-hmm. lenses, what matters? I think you learn that along the way when you, you start. Because I think when you're new, you think it's all camera, and you think yeah. whatever lens is sharp, it's fine. It's a one point eight. Oh, I love it. You yeah, know, like it doesn't. You don't really think about the things, but then you start to realize, yeah, lensing really is what creates yeah. the mood for your entire aesthetic. 1%. And yeah. then you have to depend on how, how your lens is going to be used. Um, yeah, exactly. If you're going to do corporate stuff, you really, any of like the Sigma Zoom stuff is really, really good. It's perfect. You know, yeah. because corporate people want sharp images. They want clean, images. sharp. And then if you have a yeah. camera that's set to do autofocus and you're like, I'm just doing interviews, you don't want to sit there like... You know, yeah, so you're going exactly. through, like I gotta focus. Oh my, you you lean back. What the hell are you doing? You <laughs> yeah. know, just sit the autofocus, just sit yeah. back. Like I got you, yeah. I got you, right? Yeah, yeah. Where, but then, but if you have like a, a cinema zoom on like a narrative approach, you're not gonna want to take that cinema zoom. You're mm-hmm. gonna want to take something that, but you also want a body that can handle like motors. Exactly. You know, so yeah. I mean, it's it's that's it, that also plays the choice of what lens you get. So it's a lot of play. Have you played with hand. the Ari Allura? Uh, 1880. Uh, no, I haven't. It's I haven't. check that out if you if you if you're thinking clean lens. I was just yeah. on a set with it uh, the other day. Nice. And it is a clean, sharp, oh. but not like clinical and yeah. like it's it's because you you mentioned Zeiss Supreme Prime, so that's why I was like Supreme Primes are very clean as well, mm-hmm. very sharp. So I was like those. That's a very nice. Lens. It's a bazooka, but it's it's 1880 is everything you need, you need. Yeah. and it's a two point eight constant, so it's nice. Yeah, but, it's like uh, the Enginos are like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah the Enginos. Yeah, the Enginos are like the king of like you know. Yeah, the, I'm actually not market. a huge fan of the Enginos. No, really. Funny enough, I'm like I'm a Cabrio fan, like Fujinon. Okay. Fujinon. Oh, yeah. Fujinon. Yeah, Fujinon's Fujinon. Are nice though. I love Fujinon. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, we used a 19 to 90 on the shoot we did in March. Nice. Oh yeah. On on nice. Airy on Airy Minis, and I was. That was it. I, I was a that was a pretty setup. Are you a fan of like hot lot of character? Like, are you a fan of like say the Kawas? I am yeah. actually. I do like character. I love flaring. I like when when they say, "Oh, it, it, it tones on the flares." Like, why I want that? Yeah. I, I like the flare. I like the chromatic aberrations. You like leaning of, into that. Type I like of stuff? lean. I like getting that like, like setup because yeah. it it does put texture into my imaging, and yeah. I like texture a lot. Yeah. You know, um, whenever I'm lighting stuff, I'm like. Stop backlighting them. Shoot the background. Yeah. Give me something in the background. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I don't. Yeah. Who cares about their backlight right now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got my key light. I'm happy. Let's go. Yeah, you know, yeah. and my little eye light if I need that. Yeah. You know, and then just just light the background because the, back, the the depth of a background and the depth of a lens absolutely really to me sells my imagery that yeah. I really love. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, that's really cool, man. For sure. Are we getting into another lens talk? <laughs> no, 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 should we keep on going? <laughs> I know we can. We could keep going. I'm a, no, but oh, uh, man, I've, yeah. I've got stories. But yeah, I'm gonna go nuts for sure. Is there anything else you would like to add? No, but we usually ask every guest that we have on if you had one piece of advice to give, let's say, someone up and coming as a DP mm. or a filmmaker in general. What would that be piece of advice be? Yeah, respect everyone you run into. Honestly, I mean, that's the one piece of advice. Regardless of how far you go along your your career, respect um, the people above you. That's the word. People that have gotten more opportunities. I love saying that better. And the people who are even starting out when you've gotten into that level. And then give back when you can. You know, like I actually teach classes for Lyft. So I teach cinematography and lighting. Oh, cool. Yeah, at Lyft. And so I love to give. I'm like, I love the fact that I've hit hit the point in my career. I can give back. Mm. I may not be the top person, you know. And that's another thing. You have to respect the people that... Even if you're getting all the opportunities, you know, if you ever get to a point, you're going to get into the industry, you're going to start off as a PA or whatever you are, and, and you know, getting, you're going to be scraping at the, at the bottom. But within a year, if you get all these opportunities yeah, and you move you're up right. really fast, don't, don't let it get to your head. Respect the people that have not had that opportunity, yes. even if they've been in the game for 10 years. Like, you know what? I've just been, I've just had a little bit of luck opportunity with it, uh, opportunity wise, right? 
And your lane's been a little rough, but you know what? Respect. You're still hustling. You're still out here playing the game, and we're yeah. all still doing the same thing, trying to make a beautiful imagery. So yeah. respect the game. That's it. Respect everyone you run into. That's what I'll tell everybody. Yeah, I love it, man. Yeah. Beautiful. That's really good advice. Thanks. Appreciate it, man. That was great. Yeah, thanks for No, coming, I loved man. it. Thanks for bringing me on. Yeah, man, that was awesome. I'll be on here all day. This is a lovely <laughs> podcast. Oh, yeah, it's, comfor- it's comfortable after a while. <laughs> it does. It, but, I, but I love talking to people. You know this. That's true. I love yeah, yeah. talking to people. I, oh. I've talked to people. We go to bars. I'll think of a deal. It's like to the bar closers, just like chit chat about this life and everything. That's yeah, yeah. that's yeah. awesome, man. All right, yeah. boom, done, done, yeah, cut. cut. Yeah. <laughs>